Can you hear this music? Uh, I cannot. Okay, I don't know if the people can hear it. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, it actually is showing up on the uh, audio output capture. Yeah, I don't, I don't hear, I put your stream on, I don't hear. Oh no, there it is, you're good. Nice, let's go. Dude, that sounds like the auto tracks I was using for the vid, for uh, my vid. Can you see the the chat as well? Uh, you might uh, want to yeah. pull the chat up on, on your on your side, so if you see any questions, you can you can answer them. Yeah, I got. It. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Arkeon? Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> uh, Archeon, you working on something tonight? And help me if I say your name wrong. <laughs> Which one of you guys are looking for context on that guy Matt who made those uh, Raven Guard bat reports? Nice. <sighs> What's up, gents? Oh shit, Archeon actually got on. <laughs> Chilling from work. All right. <laughs> the sweet man. Friday, dude. That it's like insane how we have literally viewers all over the world, and it's like the time difference is, is just it's insane. Because we, we keep wanting to try to get a, uh, a TTS game going, but he's fucking like, I'll be like, yo, I'm ready. He's like, oh, well, it's 5 a.m. here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> hey, let me know if, you, let me know if the music's that? too uh, too loud. What do you need, Matt? Yeah, the audio sounds good. It's a good, it's a good mix. Uh, it sounds like one of the tracks I was using in the, in the battle reports. Where'd you grab that from? It's just uh, I typed in um, uh, non something music, like free music. Yeah, Creative Commons. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we're saying, somebody's saying it's a little bit too loud. Uh, great, even. <laughs> and Archeon, if you're Archeon, Archeon, if you're uh, at your desk uh, and you get a chance to type out, if you can me phonetically what your name is, I want to make sure I'm saying it the right way. And then uh, William's giving you a shout out for plumbing. Uh, unexpected Inquisition Space Marine combos. Thanks, bro. Uh, uh, if you're referring to my uh, the Raven Guard list, I appreciate it. Thank you. Dude, that, that deployment video did so well. We gotta do more like general videos moving forward. I wrote out um, like my process for list building. Mm -hmm. I guess we wanted to go in that direction. Um, although I did see one of your guys was like the first base for deployment video. I know that's more niche, but yeah. So I'm gonna do. I did a list building like three populists with chaos space marines, gray knight, and death guard. So if you want to do ones for like space marines and tau and, and guard and stuff, that'd be awesome. Cool. Uh, Graven, is it still too loud or does that work? So I got because it, so it's it's turned all the way down on my end. I don't know if that matters with OBS. OBS might. Well, it's, your, it's your audio out. It's your audio out when we built it, so it, it'll be whatever volume you have coming out of your your uh, device will be the level that's going in. Um, yeah, because right now I have like on my end the the little bars. It's very low on my end. I'm not sure if I have to change that at all. I don't hear it at all anymore. So that's real low. All right, yeah, Gray saying it's good now. All right, cool. <laughs> Talking to the table was a little enjoy. I love the content. Nice, appreciate it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, a Christmas beer, ten percent. 
it was uh it was expired in september uh and somehow the beer distributor was still i mean they're probably legally not able to sell it but they sold it for half off <laughs> so i bought a whole case for like 24 bucks it's a good, good grab as long as it's not gonna kill you exactly but then then i googled it obviously i was like oh it's not gonna kill me sweet we're good good low bar right um uh, William, talking about plans for uh, Grey Knight, Chaos Space Marines, how to play competitively. Um, I think that'd be solid. I don't know, Derek, what do you think about that? Doing a full, full how to do CSM, full how to do uh, GK competitively. Could you, could, could you put that in one video? So, how to play them competitively or how to make a list competitively? Uh, it looks like... Because uh, um, Chaos are fucking list? competitive. No matter what list you put down, yeah, it's going to be now. insane. <laughs> well, William is asking uh, he plans to do a more competitive uh, GK or CSM guide on how to play competitively. So I think it's broadly speaking. Uh, I did do a list building competitively for Grey Knights and Chaos Space Marines, and I'm about to do that Death Guard. It's going to be up on Patreon probably tomorrow, but then after like a week or so, it'll be out on uh, on YouTube. But yeah, it's, I actually already have two of them made. I just have to make the Death Guard one, and then it's, I'm going to upload it to Patreon tomorrow, and then probably a week or two with uh, YouTube. Well, there you go, William and Graven. You got it. Um, what's up, Ryan? Welcome. So did, did I ask you, are you going to LVO this year? Probably uh, not. not. Your kids do like a month before. Yeah, right, right before. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be locked out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> just stuck inside making content yeah well i'll do some like uh i'll check out some winning gt list and talk about their gameplay or something dude you weren't at the last uh, rtt uh, i missed you there but um i painted all of my shit and it was like three three colors ready to go with the chris cultus it was Very cool first time ever was that there's 16 a piece so you had three of those so yeah so i had three of those models? yep so i had Basically, I did all this within like two days because I used the airbrush. So I had the seekers. So I had like all this painted. I had the five seekers. I had all of the uh, dark communes and then all the accursed calls as they were all painted one color. Um, and then I went through, did all the details, three, three colors of details, and I did all the bases in one day. Sweet. That's a, that's a heck of a painting day, man. That's I was impressed. Day. I, I worked from home those days, so <laughs> it helped out a lot. You got the uh, the airbrush thing worked out? Uh, you're getting some fogs and issues. Oh, dude, it was so bad. So I, I I watched a ton of videos beforehand, but my specific airbrush I knew nothing about, and I couldn't find it. Like nobody actually had like, hey, this is what your airbrush does. So I should make like a dummy video of an airbrush. But I had <laughs> the the. Do you know anything about airbrushes? Yeah, I've been using mine for for a bit, dude. Now. So the, the, the needle, right? Um, you twist the thing at the top to like screw it in and then unscrew it. And then the more you unscrew it, the more the paint comes out, right? Well, I didn't know that. So I unscrewed it uh, as much as you could thinking that it was less paint coming out. Nope, complete opposite. So I literally <laughs> would hit the button and it would just psh, like shoot out like a spray can. And I'm like, dude, I fucking hate this. So all of my models were painted one color, basically, uh, until I realized that like, oh shit, I have to put it t as tight as I can so that nothing comes out. So then when I put the air down, the air was shooting out and no paint. I was like, duh. So I wish I, I knew that like an hour uh, ago. Uh, so oh, then when I started yeah, when I started going back and I actually did it like normal, I was like, this is this is my favorite thing. I will do this for every it's single so time. Good. It's so easy. It so much time. Yeah, so much time. Um, so now I have to go back and repaint every single model, <laughs> like different colors. Uh, I'm gonna go through some comments here. We got uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan. Hey, uh, William. Love that you guys are more focused on what works, and how to play properly rather than fluff. A thousand channels out there. Um, great battle ports, but no depth. Uh, and it's a nice change. Yeah, thanks, William. I think um, <laughs> what Derek did from the beginning, he just ripped content, and it was it just got to the meat, which was great. Um, so it inspired me to do some of the same stuff, and I think. Why, why I jumped into it was that there's a lot of these channels that have good stuff. Like, it's fun to watch, and I watch it sometimes too, but like, it doesn't help me play better. 
So like by the end of it, it's it's sort of a waste of time, even though it's like has entertainment value. So we were trying to find stuff that's going to help prepare people in a shorter time frame um, to be able to get to tournaments and compete. I feel like uh, those those are like really good for people that like the lore videos, um, like strictly yeah, no, like 40k for the lore, you know? Yeah. Because like the the one video that um, Vanguard Tactics just put out, I went to go check the video out because it was uh, Chaos Space Marines versus Space Mar like something else. Um, I was like, ah, oh, let me check out what Chaos Space Marine player he's running. And it was like a Disco Lord. It was uh, like random chosen with, like, it was it was just so random. It was a Heldrake, they had a Heldrake in there. So I was like, maybe he's just testing units? But then when I saw the Disco Lord, I was like, yeah, this is this is terrible. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, like, it's cool people take what they want to take, like, that's good. Enjoy your time, it's a hobby. Um, but at the same time, like, if you're looking to get reps, like, mental reps in, it's not productive, it's not helpful. Um, so yeah, I was, it was happy to see like some new players were liking the stuff that we were putting out there because it helped them get there quickly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, for me, it's just like whenever I go to like prepare my list, I'm always thinking about all right, what's the what are the what's the meta, what are the tournament lists, what would I play against those, and I need to know what those lists are, basically how they function and how they deploy in order to do that. Um, so trying to get that done in a nugget, it's useful. I uh, yeah. I called you and I, I played uh, the Space Wolf, right? And yeah, yeah. after seeing that, I think I want to buy a Space Wolf Army. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty sweet. They're, Not I mean, lying. They, they go in and out of being good, but um, yeah, they have some play right now, especially with some of the new attachments. Like, if you imagine that entire army that you had, that you played against, like if they all had uh, constant advance in charge. Yeah, it was, and they hit hard as shit. Like, once they get to you, it's just like... They get plus one damage on the charge. Like who? Yeah. Who does that? That's what I'm saying. So like you like the if you go in the Vanguard attachment, which is one of the new ones, you could essentially infiltrate that unit, <laughs> um, which is bonkers, right? Uh, or if you do the Stormlance one, the White Scar one, all of those units have advance and charge all all the whole game. So it's just perma advance and charge, which is nutty. And he played it uh, so much different than like how you and I would play. Like, remember your video where you had the Terminators like behind the wall, or uh, what's his name, the the jump pack guy behind the wall, and you right. just waited for people to come. He threw his Terminator out, like he advanced him eleven inches or something, just threw him out in front of the wall. So yeah. then when I reserved my Forge Fiend, he walked in and just killed fucking eight Terminators. Yeah. But if he was behind the wall, he would have had been uh, advanced and charged from behind the wall. And just made me scared the entire the entire game. Yeah, it's useful to know, like, and I talked about it in the video, but like him sitting behind that wall has more value than him killing something, right? Yeah. Because you can't you can't engage, and so that, that's what I want you to do anyway is not engage. Yeah, and they have enough uh, threat, like with the advance and charge. Yeah. Like they're going to get to you. Right. Yeah. If you if you enter into like what is it, twenty four to thirty inch range, twenty four average, thirty max. Yeah. Uh, you can get punished. Yeah. All right, we got a we got a bunch of comments. I'm gonna try to come after some of these here. Um, uh, going back up there, uh, Gray Aven, uh, we are so interested in your lists. Sweet. Uh, if you want to hear more about, um, Derek's got his CSM. He's got some GK stuff. I know he's got some Death Guard up his sleeve. If you want to hear about that, um, go for it. Uh, I got some Raven Guard stuff. Uh, Eldar, whatever else. Is Raven Guard uh, your main uh, Space Marine faction? I like them for fluff. I mean, I have Dark Angels, I have uh, I have Raven Guard, I have Ultramarines. Um, so, and then I have a Black Templar. So, like, I, I mean, I have a couple different versions. I'm actually building a, uh, like, a historically based Knights Templar army because what I'm finding is if I just paint them in a different scheme, then I can use them for whatever faction as GW goes in and out of fashion with, who, you know, who cares for what. So I just, <laughs> I just found a really cool theme that I like a lot, and I'm leading into it. Oh, yeah, I can I can pull up some of those for you. You can see what that looks like. Yo-Yo uh, Fam, Arbalist, how you doing, man? Never used an airbrush. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh, I would, Derek, you can speak to it. Arbalist said he's never used an airbrush before. How's it been for your workflow? Uh, So this is my first, basically, batch of people that I uh, started painting. And I would definitely recommend figuring out the kinks before painting 100 models of it. Uh, yeah. then you wouldn't waste your time. <laughs> uh, but I will never not use an airbrush moving forward. Yeah. 
I think it is 100% worth it, especially if you play tournaments and you change lists a lot or just need like this unit painted up before the weekend or something like it, it helps out so much. Yeah, seems fair. <laughs> it doesn't work with that the slap chop style as much. I mean, you can do it, but um but yeah, still no, that's not the only one. Uh Ryan says I hate airbrushes. <laughs> yeah, that, that was Derek like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. That was me like afraid to always use one. And then uh fucking Samurai gave me one uh for some dice. So he's the guy um who prints all of my 3D prints. And he got an AK printer, like it, it's amazing, he loves it. So he sent me a huge shipment and he had an extra air, uh, compressor laying around. So I was like, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll you know, take that off your hands. And he's like, all right, I'll, I'll, you know, trade you for some dice. So I was like, all right, <laughs> deal. <laughs> so I trade a uh, dice for a compressor. Then all I had to do was buy the, uh, jet thingy, uh, all of the mixers and then the speed paints from, uh, army painter works with airbrush. He's basically just, it's so liquidy that you just plug it in or pour it in and it works. Nice dude. So you don't need any thinner or anything. I haven't tried it as an airbrush paint yet. Take a look at that. <laughs> uh, uh, Graven, I've been hunting for some serious competitive Grey Knight content, uh, but there's a serious vacuum for well-produced solid comp advice. Yeah, I think that's totally valid. Uh, there are dude, a couple dude. channels out there that focus on it. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, sorry, it's just me and one last blade, honestly. Yeah. Like the, those are the only two really main Grey Knight content. Everybody else that plays it uh for battle reports, that it's not their main army. Yeah. So. Yeah, and there are a lot of good channels that have good competitive content, uh, but that they're usually more broad, and so you have to wait for them to happen to play into Grey Knights. Yeah. Um, or play with, and that's just usually it's not coming from that perspective. It's a little harder to get to. <laughs> But there's uh, so many tricks now with uh, 10th edition Grey Knights. It's you can literally do a video every single day on them. And there's, I, I mean, there's a really loyal fan base there, right? I mean, they, it's a sweet army thematically and aesthetically. It's very dedicated fan base as well. Like yeah. you like it because they look amazing. They're lore. Right. They were right. never like top army. Um, they were the fifth, but that's you know. Yeah, <laughs> Drago. Yeah. yeah, but uh, once you. Like you get them because you like the look and uh, the lore. Like that's kind of like what I love so much about the army. Right. But competitive wise, it's fucking forty chess every single time you put them on the table. Yep. So yeah, if yeah. you're yeah. not super competitive, you're gonna lose a lot of the games. But you're gonna have fun doing it. You're gonna be super annoying doing it because the opponent can't chase track you down. Yeah. Um, and then it's gonna make your play style better. Like if you take playing Grey Knights, and then you go to any other army in 40k, you will fucking yep. be really, really good. Yeah, I think that's valid. <laughs> and they're a sweet army. I mean, they just... I don't know how like... But... Graven <laughs> um, says, you have a wide-open niche to blow up in. Yeah, I think Derek's, Derek's done a great job in the Grey Knight space. He's really taken over that, uh, being the competitive voice for that. And number one GK in the world last year, right? Yeah, last year, right after LVO, we took the spot of number one. Um, that was like the first year that I realized that you can actually, like what ITC actually was, like the ranking system. I knew nothing about it. So I wasn't really, every single tournament I would go with like a new list, new army, like not really care about anything. And then when I realized that if you just play one army in like really competitive scene, you could like rank really high. And that's when I was really pushing for Grey Knights last year. So I took Grey Knights to like, because a couple GTs, I was playing Chaos. Yeah. Uh, and Death Guard and like random shit like that. Like Nova last year, I took Death Guard. <laughs> like just last minute, like, all right, I'll just run Death Guard. When I, if I would have ran Grey Knights, I would have been, you know, ranked higher sooner because of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest GTs in the Northeast. Right. But yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to just, you know, show that even like not, not the top armies, you can still do very well with it. That's my spot. I love playing the stuff that everybody else thinks is crap. Yeah, yeah, the underdogs. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best. Uh, uh, Ryan, Thunderwolf cats are cheap as chips. 
Yeah, Thunderwolf are going to be busted. I think the new uh, Stormlance detachment is going to be crazy. Uh, Soto Dulo. Dolo? What's up, fellas? How you doing, man? Uh, Kevin Rinsdale. Congrats on the 5K. Thanks, bro. Dude, it, Matt literally just like started and he got what, like 80 subs in two days. <laughs> he just like started the trend and then I was like, all right, we got we to gotta make a new video. So we make one and just fucking 300 subs. It's crazy. You don't need to do it, right? Well, I want better. Um, yeah, change that out. Uh, Arbus, what unit was that? Help us out. I'm sorry. We back behind in the chat here. What, uh, Probably what asking uh, about the Thundercap. Yeah, Thundercap was there. And then. Um, Yours was the unit hiding behind terrain, in case that was what we talked about. Uh, the Terminators. Played, yeah, Terminators for Space Wolves. And then I played the uh, Raven Guard. I had an Assault Marine Assault Squad with with Shrike. Um, you can check that out in those three battle reports if you missed it. Uh, Ryan and Cohen, Thunderwolf Cav. Uh, they're giant wolves with Space Marines on them. Yeah, they're, uh, they're unique with to Space With four wounds. Wolves. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> super beefy. They thump real hard. Uh, and you can buff them in a lot of different ways. Um, they're a little bit underwhelming with AP1, but with a you know, volume of fire. And then you can give them devastating wounds now too, which is... And they're, yeah, they're now cheap. Um, Archeon, Archeon. I've been trying to decide on whether to drop the money with, on an airbrush or not. Uh, if you're going to paint like a full army, <laughs> it will probably pay for itself in time. You might honestly find one on Facebook Marketplace like or eBay. That's pretty cheap. Like I, I didn't get an expensive one. The the compressor was you know just a basic compressor. It doesn't have um, a nozzle to control the flow of it, and it it still works fine. So especially being your first airbrush, I wouldn't drop like you know, two three hundred bucks on it. Agreed. Yeah, get a crap one. They work decently well. They'll get the job done, and then you'll be you'll be terrible at it in the beginning. And then if it justifies the cost later, then go get get another yeah. one afterwards. But you probably won't yeah. need to graduate past that one unless you're going to do something real serious about it. So I would say if you got a, if you have a long list of painting things that you're going to get done, go get one. If not, chill. Um, or if you don't want to do it, and you're going to do a bunch of stuff. Slap chop is a sweet technique that's been going on. Yeah. Uh, just Google up slap chop, and you'll. I mean, people. Some people who are like really into painting hate it, um, but it looks nice quickly, and doesn't require an airbrush. <laughs> um, I'm assuming the new GW paints would need thinner. I haven't tried the new ones, the uh, what do they call them, the quick shade ones or whatever it is. I haven't tried them with an airbrush yet. Derek was saying that the Army Painter ones do well. So it would be worth a try at least. Ryan Cohen, Conan. Uh, for me, they don't, they don't speed anything up. You get five minutes of painting and then you spend 20 minutes fixing a clock. Totally valid. Uh, there are times when it's super frustrating, but if you can get it down to work properly, uh, you need to thin the paint, not with, it's, it sounds ironic, but not with thinner, but with um, flow reducer. So if you thin it with flow reducer, it'll clog way less frequently. Matt. Yeah. Be right back. Uh, gotta do the wedding uh, stuff. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, be right good. back. <laughs> Take over. Is that like a right back or is that like a 45 minutes back? No, no, no. Like, like... Yeah, right back. All right, I'll carry show where you get you. Uh, yeah, so if you use flow improver instead of the um, instead of thinner, it helps a little bit. And then when you clean it, you can do back flow. There's a guy, uh, Tom uh, Boucher, Kenny Boucher from the Long War. Check him out. He's got some stuff that teaches how to do it. Um, and yeah, I think it's totally not worth it if you're going to do like a short painting session. But if you're going to sit down for an, for a couple hours, the airbrush will save you a buck at a time. Um, <laughs> And you can't put too much paint in at one time, otherwise it'll dry itself out and then it'll take longer. So it, it definitely takes, there's a learning curve, it takes some time to get used to it, but once you got it, it'll uh, it'll definitely save you buckets. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's valid, Ryan. Uh, Travis Morton, when the GK Codex drops, do you think that detachments will be based off of brotherhoods or tides? I have no valid opinion on that discussion. I'm happy to have Derek speak into that. He gets back around. Uh, Drew. I dusted off GK uh, for a tenth the other week and won a local tournament. Congrats, man. Thinking about playing them uh, more now, but GK have terrible tournament stats, on little faction issues, or just player skill. 
Uh, there's a definitely a player skill curve on GK. They are, <laughs> and it also depends a lot on your local meta. So if your local meta is full of stuff that they can't touch, uh, then they're going to struggle in some of those matchups. <laughs> but they score cha they score secondaries better than probably any other army in the game. So if you can figure out how to score secondaries without being totally slaughtered on primaries, you'll do well, even if you're losing most of your army before the end of the match. Um, I love that kind of play. Super intrigued by, by Grey Knights right now because of that. I love winning even though I'm getting table. That's my that's my sweet spot. I know it's sort of like Dark Eldar, right? Uh, but <laughs> right, enjoying the pain of things. But yeah, if I can beat somebody and have and be tabled by them at the same time, I feel pretty good. Um, so yeah, GK are solid. I think they're <laughs> they're a, a valuable list. They reward good play, but they don't play like anybody else right now. So if you're like a beginner player, and a lot of GK players are like like are, they like the fluff. They like to just push models forward, like the um, it was said earlier, there's not a ton of competitive GK content out there. So if, if you're seeing people like any uh, pilot at like any other army where they just push models forward, um, it's going to get wrecked. It doesn't have doesn't have the killing power right now, fundamentally, as an army to fight into most units, right? They don't have the AP, which is really, I mean, <laughs> they, don't have high, they don't have a high enough strength to, to go into uh, high toughness units, and they don't have the AP to go into high uh, armor units. And there's really no way to offset that unless you do dev wounds, and they don't have enough dev wounds. There's not enough access to dev wounds to do that. They used to be too expensive, now they're cheap enough. I think there are probably some MSU builds that'll be valid soon. Um, but yeah, that's it's so it's not. There's a fundamental flaw in the army, which is that it can't go into really heavy armor or really heavy toughness armies. If somebody like maxes out those areas, you're going to struggle doing any damage. And so if you play like an average player into an army like that, you're going to lose 100% of the time. So it's both skill, player skill, because there's a high curve, and then it's also fundamental issues with the army. Good players play around it. Derek's one of those. They find way to win, find ways to win on secondaries and deny primaries enough from the opponent to be able to get wins off that way. Just a totally valid strategy and, and super satisfying. Uh, Drew, don't want to get eaten alive outside of my local meta. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess, Drew, if you want to throw in your chat in there, what's what's your meta look like uh, at the tournament? Which, which armies did you play into? Um, Knights have gone down a little bit because of the nerf to towering. But uh, Grey Knights had a real hard time into Knights. I think the new the new Iron Hands detachment with like mass dreadnoughts is going to be super difficult. Because they're going to be really hard to kill and uh, they're going to punch back real hard. And they're going to score. Um, so like mass dreadnought armies are gonna be super difficult. I, when I was going into Derek, I took, um, I had plans on doing the Redemptor Dread, which is essentially unkillable, right? Um, for a Greynot army, like he can just be wherever he wants to be, and you're not gonna be able to touch him. And then he does three damage a pop, so he's gonna pull Terminators off the table fairly regularly. Uh, Arbalist uh, Grey Knights are definitely a high skill ceiling army for sure. Yeah, T11 is the is the highest you can uh, realistically realistically go into. That's correct, Arbalist. Once you yeah, once you hit T12, all of your combat is wounding on sixes, which is your only thing that has AP2, <laughs> um, outside of like multi melters on land raiders or servitors. Um, <laughs> so they're really going to struggle with that. And then two plus saves are also difficult. Uh, excuse me for one second, fellas. Sorry about that. Um, my uh, my missus is having a having a kid soon, so giving a little bit of help. I'm gonna try to run through questions real quick and then help her, for, and then I'll be right back up. Um, 
Arbalist, you can kill ten. You can kill a land raider with Drago and a ten man Terminator squad. That's true, but you're dedicating like an obnoxious amount of points to that, and then you generally are exposed afterwards. Um, and a bit of librarian help, yeah. So it requires a ton of resources to try to do that. Um, but generally, you're uh, you're not trading up in that situation. <laughs> the hardest local matchup for uh, from Drew here is uh, GSC. That's interesting. Uh, I want to test my GK moves into an army like that. Yeah, GSC is not as not as popular anymore because they got nerfed pretty hard. Um, and then your uh, your purifiers um, should be able to handle them decently well. I'd be happy to get G uh, Derek's thoughts on it, but I think they should do pretty well. Um, and then the list I'm trying this weekend from Archeon uh, versus Ripples has a Land Raider and two Nemesis Dread Knights with hammers. Um, gonna use Tank Shock. Yeah, I, I'm not with Derek on that. I think I know he he thinks uh, Nemesis Dread Knights are meany, um, but I. I think they have some play, both from the Grandmaster side and the other side. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's uh, that they're more valid. All right, I'll be back in a second, guys. Sorry, give me two minutes. Sorry guys, rotate. <laughs> oh shit! All right. Um, yeah, I got I got a wedding literally two and a half weeks from now, so literally come down to crunch time. Uh, and Matt's got a pregnant wife, so we are super busy dudes trying to make content for everybody. Uh, where did he leave off? I think I heard Grey Knights in my ear. Uh, Grey Knights. And again, if, if I miss any of these questions, just keep keep blasting them. But Grey Knight. Uh, Dread Knights, I think I heard that. I do not like Dread Knights at all in this edition. The fucking AP1 uh, not ignoring cover is just, it's just not good. <laughs> Them advancing and charging is a bonus and maybe getting some tank shock off, but they're just, and then they hit on fours. So you kind of need to run a tech Marine or tech priest with them as well. And their buffs only go off in command phase. So if they advance and charge into something up forward, kill it, and then next turn they get teleport assaulted to come back, you basically have to wait a turn to buff them up again. So it's just constant cycle coming in and out of not really doing anything. I would have, I'm actually running a meme list on Monday uh, with six Dread Knights. So if you really want me to co complain about Dread Knights, watch that, uh, watch that game. Uh, that's going to be up probably in a week or so, but I'm playing Space Marines against it, so... Jack's bringing his uh, death watch, and I'm bringing I think six. I think they got play, man. Like the, um, because they're just even if even if you look at them as a mobile and uh, hard to kill unit, that's decently like cheap now. Uh, I mean, they're they're an efficient hard to kill unit that can score secondaries on a regular basis, and then if somebody misplays into them, then you can you can punish them. Um, yeah, I think my takeaway was that with them was when they first came out and you're competing against towering yeah which is not a thing anymore right? which is not a thing anymore so now i don't mind putting them back on the table to test them out again but the first time i ran them matt was against necrons and i had my grandmaster and another dread knight charge a ghost arc and yeah. failed to kill it yeah then i don't think you count <laughs> on them to kill much like they're they're punchier than your other stuff, but they're not like they're as punchy as an Invictus war suit, right? They're they're not, and they don't get oaks, right? They're not gonna be nearly as good. So like they're only there to hurt somebody, or to tie stuff up. Like you should you should always expect them to punch down, instead of punch up. Like they used to be able to punch above their weight, and now they can't. But what they can do is be cheap, jump around the table on a regular basis, and be hard to kill in return. Like yeah, they also save, weren't cheap, as well. Right yeah. now they're cheap. Yeah. So, so and, I, and I haven't played Grey Knights since the the new, th like, points. So, like, I was playing them with Nova points. <laughs> so they were, like, everything was overcrossed and just way too much. Now they're so much cheaper. Yeah. Like, I don't think they're busted, but they're... Oh, no, not at all. I'm curious to see play. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try not. <laughs> What's up? I said I'll try them out. <laughs> I'm gonna run six yeah, of I'm them, curious. so. <laughs> I'm curious to see what your results are. 
I didn't know you had six, man. That's that's a. <laughs> I had dedicated. six when you can run uh, three detachments. So, oh, yeah, you it was like in ninth edition where you can run uh, three different detachments. So you would run like three Grand Masters, but they were all from different attachments. Yeah. And then you have, you know, one detachment, which is like the, the buffing up uh, one, which would have three of the Dread Knights. And yep. then the other two detachments, which just have basic infantry. So one detachment would be super good with the Dread Knights, like plus one to hit, plus one to wound, stuff like that. And yep. then the other two would just be there. But yeah, it was funny coming to a tournament with, you know, even just five Dread Knights. People were like, fuck. Like they did not want to see them on the table. I remember playing you in ninth and I was like, I don't know how I, like, I don't know how to play into this because they're just going to never die and then they're going to hurt me back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now they only have the first half of that, right? Now there's nothing. Um, yeah, right. and the fly kind of sucks too. Yeah, like this edition and vehicles is, having to like run around or go up and down and shit. <laughs> that is not nearly as good. But I mean, you get to teleport every turn, so like, you know. Yeah, That's so, yeah, we, we do so just get to <laughs> place our entire army somewhere on the table. <laughs> so good. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the ability to like play into not uh, you know low competitive players with that. Like you should expect to beat any, uh, like non-vet player, just just based on that rule, like yeah. regardless of the plan. Hundred percent. And it's not that people just like forget about the mist of Deimos, where you get to just teleport away, but they forget about the mist of Deimos, and then you just teleport away. <laughs> it's also like it's a, like I'm a big fan of like special or abilities or rules that are good into good players, because mm -hmm. then like. Even you can't, you can't just like you force your opponent to play around it, or they just can't play around it. Mm -hmm. or it costs them to play around it, and yeah. then all of that is a win. Agreed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big into that stuff. Like, I don't, I don't take units that are good into into average players, especially if I'm playing like preparing for a, a GT or something, because I, I, I don't expect to need that. Um, and maybe that's just like a stupidly arrogant thing to say, but. Like I expect to be able to outplay. Average yeah, you, you rely on your skill to beat you know most people, and when you play play against you know uh, good players, you kind of tech towards them, you know. Right. Yeah. So I'll I'll tech and build into an army that's going to have abilities that are good into good players, yeah. like that force them to move around. And Grey Knights have have that in spades. Um, they just don't deal any damage, <laughs> <laughs> which is not you know, not insignificant. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I kind of lucked out with Nova as well. Like Nova, I had a uh, I, didn't, I only had Eldar once, which you saw that game. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then everything else was kind of just like a Marine. It was Chaos Space Marines and Marines, and Tau. Yeah, and you get you match up pretty well with those. Yeah, like we love three up saves. We do not like two up saves. Um, mid, help me out with this one. Man. I'm sorry. Mid, mid in Thutta. Mid N Y T T. Mindy Thunder. Um, uh, that's really hurtful to hear because I'm new here and to GK from Eldar. I don't like most Space Marines armies. Picky with Xenos armies, so GK and Jakari uh, were two that I was looking to learn. Uh, I'm an Eldar player. Have been for a good long while. I enjoy GK. I think what you should enjoy about Grey Knights is that they're so mobile and so techy um, that you can, you can learn how to play them well and be able to play into nearly anybody uh and they just got so much cheaper that they're, they're viable um, yeah they basically got their ninth points cost back yeah i think the dread knights were now 185 they were 215 <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> yeah make some make some playable at least <laughs> uh travis morton arshion uh does running great uh Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight team to tax already strained CP economy. Rapid Ingress and Tank. And Tank Shock is TSA and Mist we can't do. Yeah. That's fair there. The uh, Grandmaster Dread Knight lost his ability to do the can't be shot outside 12 inches for one CP. Uh, because his ability is like anytime you spend a CP, it's one less. So that covers the main role that they changed. So now you can only use it for 
the devastating wounds strat that we have and that's about it yeah. or like a free reroll or something so using him i it's going to be hard like it's going to be a challenge like i'm running them <laughs> six of them so i got to figure out if it's what the best play with him would be i have one of them with first of the fray i have one of them with sigil so i'm going to play both of them pretty aggressively uh, and i'll probably rapid ingress uh, another dread knight so i'll probably rapid ingress a regular dread knight that can advance and charge so he's going to rapid ingress somewhere fucking anywhere and then they can advance and charge 14 inches so i'm just going to play him super aggressively uh yo uh taylor thanks man super chat yo, thanks taylor uh, appreciate it bro good work man uh this is for you bro uh what would you run in a 1k list for your gray uh for gray knights Derek. i think gray knights in 1k is just fucking broken honestly if you if you take them into 1k tournament you should win almost 90 percent of the time uh i actually have a 1k list right here for you <laughs> so i got castling crow He's got 10 purifiers, obviously, because Crow with purifiers in a 1,000-point game will just kill any infantry on the table. Uh, and then as they die, they get stronger. I got Drago with five Terminators because you should have Drago in every single list. He can come down, kill a demon easily, or just come down on a backfield, charge something for a six-inch charge, and just kill it like amazing and just take over. That unit, Matt, has 17 OPSEC. <laughs> like, just coming down and getting a six-inch charge. One strike squad because you make it sticky. You have a scout move. You can do secondaries with them. Like they're very good. Uh, Caldus Assassin, even in a thousand point game, is going to do most of your secondaries for you. And then a, a Inquisitor Henchman squad. Let me actually change that up because I thought you could bring a Mystic, um, but the Mystic only works if you have an Inquisitor attached to the unit. Yeah. So I'm going to actually take that Inquisitor out. I'm going to take out the Servitors I had. That gives me 75 points. So what can you do for 75 points with Grey Knights? Not a lot. Um, I can get rid of 40 points. That gives me 115 points. I still can't get another Strike Squad. Gosh darn it. Uh, are the Rhinos 75 now? Yeah, but you don't really need Rhinos with Grey Knights. I mean, for the, uh, they call it the Strikes. Yeah, you don't, again, Teleport Assault. Like, you just, you don't really need I mean, more for the charge, but yeah, that's there. Yeah, so basically what strikes do is they move up, they scout move, they make it sticky, and then you teleport or assault them to go do something else sticky. <laughs> that's all That's all they do. Uh, so I have 115 points. And you can only bring one allied unit. So maybe a Brotherhood Champion or a Libby. Probably just a Libby. It's like a solo Libby. Yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll score for secondaries and do damage in random places. <laughs> yeah, because for 100 and some points, you can't really bring a lot for Grey Knights. Yeah, I, th I think just a solo Libby. 100 points, you have 15 points left over. Or... So throw that you guys I can see you're working on the phone throw that under the camera and then uh, for Taylor's sake put that up there for the the, the final 1k form if you don't mind 115 points you're done and uh, midnight thunder I see it thank you appreciate you so you can mind. only have one allied character or one allied unit so at that point. like you can bring like a 10 man squad of something but i just don't think that'll be good enough for the 75 yeah for 115 like you can do an inquisitor that's 40 and then you have like 60 75 points which wouldn't really be anything yeah honestly i would just go fucking libby Inscapable Wrath. There you go. <laughs> so we got Libby with Inscapable Wrath, Crow, Drago, Termi, Strike Squad, 10 Purifiers, and Caldus Assassin. Nice. There you go. That, that would be my 1k list.
from the mouth of the JK man himself. <laughs> <laughs> hey Derek, are there uh, you can't double stack characters in any for Grey Knights at all, right? No, they should have made uh, the um, chaplain be double stacked. Yeah, I mean he's that's not like in the any other only character. Or... Yeah, I'm cu I'm curious how they how they work that out later because that's that's a big deal. You can get a named character with a, an enhancement buff if you give it to a different character and stick them both in a unit. And yeah, JK just don't have that. Yep. Like even like chaos uh, have it, death guard. It's like all my other armies have it, but fucking gray knights. That was the first thing I looked at, and they didn't have anything. Uh, William, thanks for joining up, man. Appreciate you being here, and uh, check it out. Good luck starting recently. Glad to see you uh, putting in the work to, to get better at it. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for any space marine, just hit me up in Discord. Happy to chat with you. If you don't have a uh, assassin, you can exchange the assassin for, like what they said, either a Kodias to do secondaries and try and get you a CP, uh, which gives you enough points to take away the Libby and add a Interceptor Squad, which might actually honestly be, be better. So like instead of the Cal Assassin, you could always do something else. See, I love the Cal Assassin in Grey Knight specifically, because yeah, people always want to reroll the charge. Yeah. Against she's us. Super good in secondaries. Oh my god, yeah. Like she has her own built-in teleport assault. She does. But the lone op is just super good. Yeah. I love that you went down on points, but I know. Like 20 <laughs> 25 points, like sure. Yeah. Cause she uh, was in every list at, at 115. Yeah, yeah. I mean she does less now, but she's still good for all that other stuff. Yeah. Uh, Midnight Thunder, uh, only, only one other player of 40k where I am from, sorry bro, uh, uses Death Guard, Demons, and Thousand Sons, so yeah, I uh, think Grey Knights have a chance in a 600 to 1000 point game. Uh, I mean, I think for sure, Death Guard De is going to be a challenge. Death Guard are <laughs> definitely a challenge. If the you're a Death Guard player, good. sorry, if your Death Guard player is smart, he'll do the minus one to hit. Because like Grey Knights hitting on fives is just ridiculous. Yeah. Like we, we already don't kill anything, so imagine us hitting on fives. <laughs> yep. Yeah, even worse for sure. Um. <laughs> oh, Taylor. Coming in again, what you got? Yeah, 1k tournament list? Go for it, man. I don't know, I got an input on my 1k, yeah, post it up. Post it up, man, we'll take a look. Um, Travis, 1,000 points, Libby with Terminators times three. <laughs> uh, Travis, yeah, that's, that's legit. I would I would add strikes and or an assassin like Derek's talking about, because you're, you're going to be uh, behind on secondaries, and that would be a way to get you some of those. The Terminators, they're more mobile, but they're still going to be limited. to like You need them to impact the game. And if they if they're doing that, they're not scoring secondaries. So um, I don't know if you check me on uh, what you think about that, Derek. But that's my my take. Yeah, like you you, you know how how to play the game. It's like secondaries is, is king. You can you can mortal wound the entire army, but if you <laughs> can't do any secondaries, it's it's just it's tough. And yeah, it's cool about Libby's is they can do secondaries while also doing that board of doom. Right. But if yeah, they're not so leading they're a unit, they out. die. So I would I would drop one of those. Um, Travis, and then try to get some some utility units in there. Uh, Midnight Thunder, unpopular opinion here, but personally, I miss Ninth Edition. Uh, I <laughs> hear that, man. I hear that. I had I, I felt like I had perfected a really sweet Eldar list when they were bad at the end of Ninth, and uh, <laughs> it, it just dodged. Um, Archeon at Travis. I'm gonna start them on the board, and I've got Cotes in it as well. Hopefully, get some CP for me. That, that's valid. Arbalist, uh, Travis, I've used Grandmaster Dread Knights pretty successfully in the times I've used him. Always rapid ingress him. Yeah. The, the great way to play it. Uh, you yeah, can get I, the uh, Arrive Turn 1 enhancement too, right? First of the fire? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can uh, rapid him on turn 1 to come in. Question to you, Matt. Do you build a list expecting to do rapid ingress? Uh, the, the Raven Guard list is. I, so I, what about every list that you build? Um, not every list plays Deep Strike that same way. I have a lot of them that are built around secondaries or like utility units that Deep Strike, and they don't they don't care. 
What about not deep striking, just reserves? Yeah, reserves, I mean, almost every list that I play is going to have reserves. Or something. Unless there's a real reason not to build with reserves. But not rapid ingress reserves, or just... Yeah, not rapid ingress reserves. Some of them, like, I want to be out and if later. Like, utility stuff, like, Swooping Hawks will come in, and I'm not going to engage at all. There's no reason for me to. Yeah. And as long as I have the bubble, I'll just go in there. Got um, it. But yeah, I mean, it's it's good, and, and probably 80% of the time or more, I'm planning on a rapid ingress at some point. Kevin started, Whitlatch, what's up, man? Welcome. I started taking that uh, that to heart of rapid ingress. I just think it's like one of the most broken stratagems I've ever seen, and yeah, you kind of have to plan for it every single time you play somebody. Like if they have any type of reserves, you're just planning that they're going to come in turn two, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that it's it's just it's a game changer, and if people don't prepare or plan for it, then it's it's going to wreck them. That's, yeah. I mean, that's why the, the Raven Guard list, like, essentially null deploys, like, you can't come in. Like, 20 Infiltrators, you can't, you're just not going to come in on my side of the table. Yeah. So go ahead and wrap an ingress right in front of me, and then I'll, I'll shoot or charge you. <laughs> you haven't uh, played Nid yet, have you? I have not, I don't know what that list is. So they have a, a Biovore that can shoot out a Spore Mine that can do actions, count as a model, so it could be behind enemy lines. Uh, and it stops uh, deep strikes with a nine, obviously, because it's a model. Right. So on the turn that he's like, oh, I'm just gonna put this spore mine fucking over here because I don't want you to rapid ingress on this side of the table. <laughs> so it blocks out like 18 inches of the of the table edge on this side. Uh, yeah, just for one one spore mine. Yeah, they were that way in ninth, and like we're very quickly fact to not be able to do that because that's stupid. Yeah, uh, I agree. <laughs> but yeah, down. And then rippers are like twenty points for a single, uh, forty mil base that can deep strike. <laughs> um, yeah, Taylor, when you get the phone on, you have that. Just post it up, and we'll we'll give you a review on that one. Uh, uh, Taylor says I just find Drago bad because of his points compared to uh, Voldus. The, yeah, the, the deep strike and six inch charge is is really strong. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you don't really want to give that up. I was playing him when I first started. He did nothing for me, and I was playing him just to like kind of kill stuff because I'm comparing him to ninth. So, you should play Grey Knights. Never comparing your army to ninth edition because you're going to be mad every single time. I, um, I think that's true. Like of all armies, all the time. Ignore, <laughs> the ignore the previous edition or ignore the previous thing because you're not, it's not valid anymore. Exactly. So. But in a vacuum, yeah. Yeah, you can't compare it at all. No, so I I have to stop comparing it to Ninth Edition Drago, who had so much shit uh, yeah, was... to give to his army. So once I stopped doing that, uh, then I I focused on what he did good this edition, which is the six inch charge and taking over objectives. Yeah. And it made it look so much better. Clown. Thanks for the super chat, man. Appreciate you. Uh, What's up, Dread Clown? Says, Mind taking a look at my CSM Alpha Legion, uh, first oh. tenth edition for tournament in ten days. Well done, dude. Alpha uh, Legion. Also, if uh, cleanse and teleport Homer is fixed, the second option. If I can't, uh, yeah, uh, is it behind him bid assassins behind enemy lines. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'll leave the CSM stuff for Derek to speak into. That's that's awesome. But yeah, thanks for the the super chat, Dread Clown, and uh, good luck in the tournament. That's awesome. That you're jumping in your first one. Uh, I think Cleanse Teleport Homer as a secondary play for fixed is wildly underrated. Um, people, everybody's playing tactical like universally, so there's always a play there. You have to build your list to be able to sort of like be midfield and just reside. Um, Alpha Legion, I don't know if they have that the same way, but um, there's something there. And then if you have something where you can like be ready to kill tanks for bring it down or assassinate uh, kill characters, then you can swap one of those out if like you're going to play into a unit that's going to put like if you're playing in a world leaders. Um, Cleanse and teleport homers is not going to be the play. Um, so in those situations, you can pivot. But yeah, otherwise, that's my that's my take. But yeah, CSM, um, Derek, if you want to throw an Alpha Legion kind of concept out, or you yeah, get, is he uh, asking us one, like you want to is he asking list? us for his list or? Yeah, he says, "Man, am I taking a look at my CSM?" Yeah, hundred so percent. Yeah, yeah, post throw that. that down, man. Take a look. Because uh, you're you're really good at, at second um, 
fix because I haven't done fix yet, honestly. And, and I and I noticed that the LGT a lot of players actually did fixed. Um. So Taylor. I'm not sure if I can show that message restricted. Yeah, you might have to just kind of like type it out potentially or send I mean, it to me on Discord. Yeah, if, you're in, if you're in Discord, yeah, we can pull it out that way. Yeah, I can share my screen and go over with Discord. Uh, oh, so I was saying like you're really good at um the fixed secondaries because i haven't made a list yet for specifically fixed i honestly don't even know what fixed uh you can take i've seen a lot of people take the deploy teleport homers and assassinate especially against eldar because there's so many characters that keep coming back and you know stuff like that yeah so what would you recommend as like i guess two of the easiest ones to build around it's definitely those two um, yeah, de deploy and cleanse. Because really, like, there's there's a build I have now that I'm looking at with the um, <laughs> with the new Space Marine detachments. If you go Black Templars, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can essentially take like 120 Primaris Crusaders, <laughs> uh, w like without sweating it, and still have other stuff. So like, the idea there would be like, all right, I'm going to cleanse the these two objectives in the middle because I'm just going to like saturate them with bodies and not care. Yeah. So like every single time, even if they kill you off, you could still move on and action, uh, and you would still like you could theoretically not kill a single unit in the entire game and still win the game. Can you um, do that in engaged? If you're in engagement range. Yeah. Like, can um, you cleanse or do deploy teleport homers if you're in combat? Uh, you can't. But if you um, if you take detachments that allow you to do that, and there are enhancements and detachments that pull that off uh, gladius has it there's a there's a few others that that allow you to fall back and, and shoot oh because space um, marines yeah bullshit right, space marines. <laughs> they can, they can fall back and then action but even if like you cycle out one and just throw another unit of guys on there like it still works yeah um so you, you yeah you could essentially just own three to four objectives all game long be like blown up constantly and just action on middle objectives in one game that is that is awesome yeah it's, it's one of those that I want to try out and just like see how many marine bodies my, my opponent can kill. I just, I don't have that many marine bodies. <laughs> I have to like go out and get them all and throw them together. Or like, gotcha. bar a bunch of so if you have a pistol in any one of your units, you're eligible to shoot in combat so then you can do the action. Uh, I don't think if you're engaged it allows it, but if that's the case, I'm happy to hear it. Yeah, if it just says, uh, I guess, eligible to shoot, you might be able to. But uh, what about if you don't have any shooting at all was that then in the games workshop commentary where if you don't have any uh guns like nerglings can you yeah. still do actions i haven't read it but that's what people have been playing yeah i'm sure it's in the commentary or the pamphlet or you know one of the other 17 different places you can find the rules then <laughs> uh to familiar units without guns Okay, so if you don't have a gun and you're in engaged, would you be able to do an action? Like Nerglings. Yeah, I don't think they can do it in combat, but I don't, I don't know that you can do combat either way. I guess you just have to look up on the card. Yeah, figure it out. It says there. Uh, I have to do a secondary, actually, uh, video as well. Go over all the secondaries and stuff. I think a lot of people are disregarding the assassinate secondary, so they're just like stacking up on characters because it doesn't matter anymore, or it feels yeah. like it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so that's an opening. Like I've been looking at the Raven Guard, even the Vanguard one, because you can do precision in combat with like a whole unit. Hmm. Um, so like you would just be able to throw your guys out there, get get slaughtered, but get all the characters and then win. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what's great about it is like you, there's no limit, like there's no cap. Right. So you're just like, all right, I just right. got 20 points in one turn. Right, and then you just don't have to care anymore, right? You're done. Yeah. yeah. Just super helpful. Uh, Martin Lawning, I agree. I miss ninth. I hate playing poker with those with those cards. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, uh, Dreadclown, if they don't give assassinate or bring it down, what should I take? If you so, if you're playing in the world eaters, that's not going to give you assassinate or bring it down, right? Some sort of army that's going to charge you and and deny your plans and teleport homers, um, then you don't take fixed. There's, if you if you're built if you're built for cleanse and teleport homers, 
and you're playing into a super like aggro army that's going to be in your on those objectives and take them from you, and they don't give you other set fixed secondaries, then you don't do it. Mm. Um, which, which sucks. Like you'll be at a disadvantage, but you'll have play. You don't like double down on a thing that you know is not going to work. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Taylor's typing up a list now. Um, Dread Clown, uh, you can action teleport Homer cleanses if you have pistols. You just have to be eligible to shoot and not shoot with charge. Um, yeah, I gotta check the ruling on that. I, I think, and that might be a vestige in 9th edition that I'm just remembering wrong, but um, I don't know if you're allowed to do it if you're engaged as well. Yeah. Uh, Drew, yo, Death Guard. <laughs> Let's go. So, Derek, of the, of the armies you play, right? I, mean, I remember you used to play Necrons for, like, a long time back, but of the armies you play, which one's your favorite? So, I guess we can do this in two categories. Uh, favorite looking and lore-wise, or favorite to play? Uh, yeah, I guess that's two answers. Um, before you jump in, Dread Clown says, uh, for the rules commentary, page five, unless the unit advanced or fell back this turn or is locked in combat, it is eligible to shoot even if no models in that unit are equipped with ranged weapons. So yeah, you Perfect. can't be engaged. Thank you, Dread Clown, for finding that. You can't be engaged, um, and you can't have advanced or fallen back unless you can, you have a weapon that does not right? Okay, so basically, if you don't have a weapon, it's almost as good as, a, as having a pistol. Uh, I, I wouldn't say, yeah, I guess it's the same thing as pistol, right? Because the locked combat doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's, it's so the same like, as having any weapon, ranged weapon that's not an, uh, an assault weapon. Yes. So that's awesome. So, like, Nurglings and Shake could still do actions and stuff. Yeah. Even while locked in the combat. Yes. Sir. That's awesome. Uh, all right, so my first favorite, obviously, if you couldn't guess, was fucking Grey Knights. Like, they will be my do or die army, like, no matter what, even if they like homicide and go into chaos which would be obviously impossible they would still be my favorite army um and i just love them because they're such an underdog like they're not they're not the most popular army uh and the people that do like them are just like so fanatic about them like myself so it's like they never want to just give them up like if I, i've had mine since demon hunters <laughs> yeah. i've even gotten out of the game and i still haven't sold them so they are definitely my go fucking always play them army. Um, my most fun army right now currently is Death Guard. I think Death Guard, I've, every game I've played has been super close. It's not busted or broken at all. Uh, I don't ever put the models on the table and be like, um, I completely lost or I completely won because every single turn you're basically fighting <laughs> for points because they're so slow. Like them just running across the table, they, it takes them forever to get across the table. Um, and it's funny because I, I even play tactical with that army. And it's like, oh, take your enemy outpost. I'm like, oh, I'm already in my deployment zone. <laughs> like, that's never happening. Uh, but yeah, they, now with the new rules, they are just super fun because I'm building my list around the minus two to hit and minus two to uh, uh, hit in combat and shooting. Because it's minus one ballistic skill and minus one weapon skill. And then the Death Guard have a stratagem for stealth. So if you shoot Mortarian, for example, but you're still in my contagion range, you're minus two. So you're minus one weapon skill and minus one to hit because of stealth. So if Marines, you know, don't have a, whatchamacallit, a guide, it's not guide, it's a, their main thing. Uh, oath of the moment? Oath, yeah, ignores cover and oath, yeah. Yeah, so like if they ha if they don't have oath, basically you just don't sh kill my army. <laughs> like okay. Marines trying to hit on fives is just hilarious. Yeah. So I played yeah, it into Jack. Jack is good. And we were just laughing the entire time with how many <laughs> how many times Nurgle was within six inches of him in melee. So he's hitting me hitting me in melee on fives as well with Marines. <laughs> so if he didn't have oath, I literally would just walk across the table and never die. So they're probably my, my most fun to play army right now. Nice. What about yeah, yourself? They frustrate, they frustrate the opponent so much. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll jump in after we got Taylor's list in here now. Go and take a look at it. It's got he's got it in the chat. 
All right, so 1K with Voldis. Five Terminators. I'd probably go Paladins with Voldis because of the minus one hit and minus one to wound, like combo. Uh, but also five Terminators and a thousand points is really good because if you could bring back a free Terminator in your command phase in a thousand points, that's <laughs> it's really good. Gidgeman, Voldis, Terminators are able to return. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brother Captain, Psy Cannon, Ten. I would go Grandmaster. Um, if we don't have any rerolls, which it doesn't look like that you have a uh, Dreadnought, I would definitely go Paladins over Termies, especially a 10 man brick. I'm sorry, I would go Grandmaster over the um, Captain because of the ignoring modifiers. So the example that I just gave with Death Guard, like minus two to hit, is just, in you would just ignore that. So it's like, you you ignore all the modifiers and even a thousand point game like you're, you're just gonna ignore everything so any minus one to damage your side cannons now are still two damage your melee weapons are still two damage so you're just gonna kill whatever and he has one free strat so he can use the free strat to do the devastating wounds on the charge when you really need him to do damage so i think the grandmaster is a lot better than the exploding sixes because we don't have any rerolls if we had a, a dread in there specifically for uh the purgation squads like if i had three purgation squads a, a dreadnought and 10 paladins yeah i'd probably go brotherhood captain but i definitely think it would be grandmasters with uh 10 paladins uh strike squad with one side cannon sticky objective yeah i wouldn't go dread knight uh, in a thousand points, he would just be targeted super fast. Two thousand points, it's easier to hide him, but one thousand points, like, oh, let me just kill that big ass thing on the table. So, honestly, I think with your list specifically, Dr Voldus is always fun to play. You know, if you can put him on the table, it's it's great. Um, five Terminators is fine, uh, just because they can come down and charge. I would honestly run Drago over him, but. That's just, that's just me. Uh, and then I would definitely ch change up the Grandmaster over the Brother Captain. I think it's only a five point difference now. Like he used to be more, I think 15 points different, but now he's only a five point difference. So Sigil as well. If you can fit a Sigil, which I wouldn't run a Grandmaster in 10 Paladins without a Sigil, I would put Sigil on my uh, Grandmaster in Paladins. Yeah, like the five point difference is 100% I would run Grandmaster. Like I've never run the Brotherhood Captain now that they're basically the same point cost. Grandmaster just does so much for you in a game. Best grading of models, Celestine is dealing with high toughness and wounds and demons. Uh, bring Drago and do devastating wounds so you anti-infantry 2 plus <laughs> or anti-demon anti 2 plus. But yeah, Taylor, thanks for posting the list, man, and for the super chat. Appreciate you very much. Uh, Dread Clown, we're still waiting on your list when you want to throw it in there for the Alpha Legion. Yeah, dude, the, the enhancement for Sigil should be in every single list. Like, that's on your main unit that you don't want to die. That, that are, like that unit you can essentially deter your opponent from actually engaging with until the end of the game, which lets you it gives you so many plays. Um, yeah, it's also a psychological like, game, isn't it? That's, that's what I mean. Like you, you just screw with your opponent so much. Like the, <laughs> some of it's like, <laughs> um, like I think why well, I think Gladiator Strike Force for Marines is, is still solid is because it's like oh once per game you get to do this thing, so then you like people have to play around it and then. Um, <laughs> They're like constantly playing around it, even though you can only use it once. Yep. So like you get to you get to punish them for that, and then if they don't play around it one time, then you pull the trigger. Then, so it's the the one offs people like hate on them because it's not every turn, but they're really stronger than people give them credit for. I mean, the secret to beating the Grey Knight is force sigil turn one. Like as yeah. soon as as soon as humanly possible. But you get in their head by just saying, hey, remember, I can put them anywhere on the table right away. So you don't want me to get be in your, in your deployment zone turn one if you shoot them. They're like, ah, you're right. I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, please don't shoot them. Please don't shoot them. Please don't shoot them. 
Yeah, because I mean, the, if you think about it for, for your opponent, it's going to be the the best time to engage is early. There's never going to be a better time later. Like it's not like you're going to have more resources to deal with them later on in the game. Exactly, and then when you have it for late in the game, it's just even more deadlier because now your ten man paladin unit is still live end game. Yeah, I've done it when they were engaged uh, into Tau. So I finally get engaged with Tau, and he does it like turn five. I'm like, all right, I'm going to Sigil now. <laughs> Let me just take him up and put him on my backfield, and I get five points for a primary. <laughs> like, all right, right. they're gone. <laughs> yeah, if you wait until turn four, then you'll never, you won't be able to touch him ever. And then they, yeah. they're invincible. And then next turn, they just teleport us all again. The best, though, I'm sure everybody has been doing it, is uh, Mist and then Rapid Ingress in the same turn. Yeah, that's a good deck. Uh, Taylor says, the funny thing is that list is exactly 1k. There you go, man. Got it. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, and you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and thank like, you. He, he said thank you, so yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> the invited you should. Um, Travis, that's WTC ruling ignored. that minus one damage is ignored by the GM ability. Uh, not everyone is ruling this, but it's worth uh, the, the GM over the bro brother captain alone. Yeah, I think I think most places are taking the minus one damage or any kind of like damage reduction stuff as part of that, because they're not the only ones that have it. The custodes have it, and there's a new marine thing that has it. Um, so yeah, the ignoring modifiers thing is is legitimate. Uh, it's uh, funny because they didn't roll it at Nova, which I was super like butthurt yeah, about, um, because literally every other place ruled it that way. Mm. Uh, and I was literally in the middle of shooting a custodes ten man brick. <laughs> Like, I was, like, three inches away from him. I'm like, all right, I'm going to shoot all my, you know, things. And he's like, all right, minus one to, minus one damage strat. I was like, oh, I ignore that. He's like, no, you don't. I was like, yeah, I do. So we had a cold judge over. He's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're ruling it that you don't. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Because he, really he got ruled. Yeah, he got ruled against it, like, a game before. So he yeah. already knew the rule, and I didn't know it. So I was like, well, I can't go back now. I guess, I, I guess I'll just die. <laughs> yeah. That's a bummer. That's the, that stuff is usually pretty pivotal, too. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Oh. My dominant box. Uh, checking out a new Libby Terminator. Anybody know the, the base size for them? Just the 40 mil. The new Terminator? Because, like, the, the Terminator Captain is the big one. There's bigger Terminator bases? Terminator Captain? Yeah. The new one is the big base, so this is the 40. Dude. Holy shit. Why is it so big? It's huge. I mean, it's awesome for, like, uh, consolidation now. And then they just kind of surround that guy when he's base to base. Yeah. So I'm wondering wow. if the, the, if the, we call it the, the librarian, which is the same as he get, this is the larger base also. My uh, librarian that I got, the one that I used uh, from the box, Leviathan box, I think is the normal Terminator base. That's the one I'm building now. That's what I'm, I'm curious about. It's such a cool model. I put the Grey Knight helmet on it, the Grey Knight uh, four sword. It just looks so fucking cool. There are 350s. Can I rapid ingress Tiger Shark within three inches of a stealth suit squad and their teleport home ability and not have to be within six inches of the table edge? So a lot of stuff like that, it just comes down to the wording. Yeah, because, yeah, because one, like with my come within three inches is in my movement phase, I think, or like if this unit deep strikes or whatever like you can come in within three inches i can't do that while i uh, rapid ingress um so it really just depends on the wording and when you can do it so if it says like your your movement your teleport your whatever phase then you can't do it out of phase or out of activation and rapid ingress i believe is at the end of your opponent's movement phase Yeah, rapid ingress at the end of opponent's movement. So if it's not your movement or your reinforcement step. So if it says your reinforcement step, then I would say no.
Uh, yeah, Ryan, it's the it is the forty mil for the for the librarian terminator. The captain gets a fifty mil, which is pretty boss. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, Kevin, did that answer your question when he was talking about the rapid ingress? Matt, what are you working on tonight? I'm building out the Leviathan kit. <laughs> oh, just the full, the full kit? Yeah, it was just work, you know, starting it. Um, I had I only took the uh, the lieutenant from it because I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, it's been great in my list. Um, <laughs> do you do you have the remainder of this of your you you bought the deck or the kit rather? No, I actually had a Patreon uh, send me the Leviathan, um, Libby. Oh, just Libby, nice. Okay. Yeah, he had he had an extra one. I was like, oh, I actually need to run three Libbies, so <laughs> let me help me out. <laughs> oh man, that's sweet. Uh, uh, Travis, yeah, the out of phase rules prevent you from using other rules when you do stuff like rapid ingress and Overwatch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm super bummed that you can't uh, double power the uh, the rapid ingress anymore. I was kind of banking on bringing two ten man bricks of terminators down for rapid ingress and then the following turn using the self doctrine to like advance and charge them both. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm a little salty that's gone. I kind of like that they did that rule though. It is like good. That, it is that good. rule was busted. That rule, like, free strat for whatever the fuck you want. Every phase, too. Like, every battle round. Like, our Grey Knights was only once per turn, once per game, which is bullshit. That, that's why. You're just salty because you don't have it. That's all it is. 100%. <laughs> uh, ingress counts. Rapid Ingress counts as your reinforcement stuff. Uh, yeah, but it happens at the end, at the end of their movement. So the, the staging matters, Kev. Yeah, you need some. Uh, Midnight Thunder, uh, what armor do you guys think is uh, the best after uh, the changes? Um, I mean, Eldar is still strong. <laughs> Whether or not they're like the best, I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that we're getting into a little bit better balance with that. Um, I think Orcs are better than people think. Still not top tier. Uh, CSM is really solid. Um, Gene Stiller Colts got hit real hard. So I don't think that they're great. Uh, the Space Marines I thought were probably better before the new book, but the loss of Oath is going to have, the loss of reroll wounds on Oath is going to have ramifications like throughout the meta. Things that were like high toughness, high armor are, are again going to be good. Um, I say again, but I think they're going to get better as a result of that. Um, <laughs> Derek, the question I'm going after here is uh, Midnight Thunder said, what armies do you think are the best after the changes, the most recent patch? Um, so I was Chaos Space <laughs> yeah, them, uh, and Eldar still strong. I thought Gene Steeler Colts got knocked off pretty hard. Um, orcs are better than people think. Um, Space Marines would have been in the conversation, but I don't think they are anymore with the loss of Oath. Uh, they can do things now that are cooler than otherwise, but r losing the reroll to wound on an, on a unit you want every single turn, yeah, your entire arm is just such a significant hit. Don't they and still they get it though once per game? They don't get it once per game. No, they get they get reroll hits every turn they don't get real wounds so it used to be hits and wounds on a single target every turn oh i thought so there was like, something that they got once per game uh i mean the, the, some of the detachments do like gladius and you're gonna see this different now right the the advance in charge and the fall back in charge um or fall back shoot in charge and then the advance and shoot that was all once per game but most people are not going to get it anymore because they're going to try other detachments because mm. there's seven now in the new book so gladius is the only one that gives that um the only other one that does like a once per turn is the first company, which is like generally considered the worst one. So you get old school oath once in a game, and that's their only detachment ability. 
So people are just like we talked about it, right? Considering it in the vacuum versus considering it versus the previous edition. So when you got like when every army got full reroll, like full oath every turn plus doctrines, and now it's like your only thing is one oath one turn. It just it feels real bad, uh, but it's <laughs> you guys are spoiled for so long, <laughs> right? It, it just means that you were busted good for a long time. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I still haven't played. Like, I just played T Suns for my first time uh, at the tournament, and I played them twice. <laughs> it was yeah. two different T Suns players, and uh, I think like them into Grey Knights is just an auto lose for Grey Knights, which is kind of kind of sucks. Like, we have a hard hard counter uh, with T Suns, but um, yeah, playing them was cool. Uh, but yeah, me with my Chaos Space Marine, it just didn't really. I didn't feel a challenge against T-Suns. Grey Knights, 100% auto lose. But I feel like playing Chaos Space Marine, it was just like I had an answer for almost everything. Uh, I think Eldar is still really fucking strong. Um, and what else would I be afraid of? Just a lot of shooting. Maybe, I can't even say Tau because Tau is like really <laughs> bottom tier. Tau Dude, I mean, Tau got much better with the but with their points changes. I th I think they're like quietly good right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, T Suns was quietly good, and now it might be Tau that are creeping back up there again. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would be concerned going into Tau list with, with a lot of different builds. But also, I think Great Knights are A tier <laughs> with the points changes. Yeah. Like if you have a really good Great Knight player. Um, it's going to be really hard to fucking bog them down. Like, if he just plays for secondaries, he's going to get a 90 point. Yep. Like, it, it's it's just going to happen. Like, you just have to accept it, and you have to just beat him <laughs> with 90 points. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kevin, uh, in quotes, once per battle, you can use the rapid ingress strat for zero CP. The target must be set up within three inches of the bear's, uh, the bear's unit and not within nine inches of enemy units. So, yeah, it's the teleport homer. Um, so the Terminators have the same exact rule, spelled the same way, and so they can, one of the model, it's not wholly within three inches, so one of the models has to be within, within partially within three inches of the Homer, and then at, after that, in this instance, I'm guessing it's the, the stealth suit, so within three inches of the stealth suit unit, and then everybody else is just nine inches from anything else. So it's like the, the GSC thing before they got nerfed on it. Um, play there. Arbalist, the Orcs are doing great now. Yeah, they're good. Uh. And Gladius gets it, yes. Uh, Drew, first company rule. Yeah, they, they get old they get old oath once per game. <laughs> um, Arbo says the uh, the Salamander Firestorm gets it. Uh, yes, they do the, from their leaders, the two, uh, uh, the chapter master and the captain there, they both give their certain units reroll wounds on it. Um, <laughs> Derek, have you played? Uh, Travis is asking if you've played into Votan since the buffs. When you get back, or if you can hear me, you can chat on that. Uh, Midnight Thunder, Fugan is a beast. Yeah, I played him in my uh, that final round of that RTT for the uh, the Raven Guard videos. So if you take a look at that tournament stuff, my last opponent had Fugan and uh, three Lynxes and two of the uh, Fire Prisms plus ten Wraith Guard and a bunch of other characters. Uh, and Fugan, I mean, Fugan is tough by himself. He's one of those, he's like sneaky tough because he gets back up. So he's one of those guys you don't want to dedicate firepower to because it feels like you're not getting anything. But you do get to spend his uh his reroll or his get back up. <laughs> Arbo says Tower doing great right now. Yeah, I think they're I think they're gonna be they're sneaky strong and they're gonna be soon oppressively strong when people are aware. Uh I think that from Arshion, uh, I think that slight changes to Votan made them much better too. <laughs> uh double grudges and cheap terminators, yeah. That Getting all that extra, those grudge tokens is is strong for them. I still worry about the diversity of their of their play style and of their their unit choices, but um, yeah, they they get they essentially got all the busted that they had in previous editions that made them so scary with so many grudge tokens. So I'm curious to see how that turns around for them. Uh, Kevin, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Midnight Thunder, 2 plus and Feel No Pain. Yeah, that's... Again, a lot of the Marine builds can do that now, too. Um, what's the one that was most recent? Like, I think there's an Imperial Imperial Fist thing where you can take minus one 
crew. Um, what's the guy's name with the shield and the hammer? I'm blanking on his name. I love the character too. The Imperial Fist guy with the captain of the first company. <laughs> um, so he gives like a, a defensive buff to a full unit of Terminators, and then if you put them in a first company detachment, you can give that unit with a, an ancient. Um, you can give them five plus feeling pain for a turn also. And so you have this like minus one damage unit. Or if you put it in the the Vanguard attachment, they're minus one to hit in stealth. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of Terminator builds that you can put together now with the new Marine decks. Uh, I think we're still waiting on was it uh, Dread Clown's CSM list. I don't know if you if you sent that over to Derek some other way, just give us a shout. We'll go look for it. I want to respect that super chat, man. I appreciate you. All right, for those of you guys who are on here while Derek's away, <laughs> um, I got to know the takes here. You, if you guys saw the Raven Guard videos, <laughs> I spent a bit of time trying to put that Chibi character together. And if I'm honest, I didn't know Chibi things were like such a big cultural item. But people have been saying, like with the Uncanny Valley thing, that they're like right on the border. So I found in the comments... Half of the people thought it was entertaining and fun. The other half of them thought it was like, why is this thing talking to me? It's scary. So uh, throw me some comments on what you guys think about the, the Raven Guard. I had the, no, the Raven Guard, the uh, Emperor's Champion character that was talking to us in those battle reports. Um, I'm genuinely curious what you guys think. Creepy or entertaining? Let me know. Lysander. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Travis in Discord. Yeah, okay. So I will. I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, Derek, Travis got us the list in Discord. Uh, All right, let's, 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 let's pull that up. Archeon, you thought he was cool. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Archeon's the man. Oh, Ar Archeon got a, a idea. I don't know if he told anybody about it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna share. We're gonna we're gonna do a partnership and build some fucking terrain and stuff. Nice. Let's do it. All right, so he's got, is it a Patreon? Uh, his CSM tourney, uh, tournament list, he put it under. Uh, Arbalist, um, uh, I think it's better like the Avatar, just too many squads. mouth animations. Okay. Uh, one thing I was thinking about Arbalist, if I put, if I made it a helmet instead of a face, like a Space Marine helmet, and then all you would have is like different shaped eye slots for it, so then there would be no mouth; it would just get run straight up. Um. <laughs> Matt, can can I can I tell you something? Yeah, shoot. I hate painting. <laughs> it is it is not it is not my cup of tea. <laughs> but you have to be in the mood; like you have to like want to paint. And I feel like beer and paint mix so well yo uh <laughs> kevin which Lodge, man thank you very much for the super chat five bucks this is your first one 10k let's go man Derek and i we're gonna go after it let's go <laughs> they were fucking we're pushing we're already at fucking 300 subs in a week all right uh all right let's, let's look at this list so the list real quick you guys could probably see it right here uh it's dark commune off to a good any start chance, any chance you can throw that bigger i can't uh can't see it yeah, so let me just zoom in right here. Like I got, I got the feet up too, and it's a little hard to see even full screen. You might have to go into OBS to change it up. How about that? Midnight Thunder, good night, dude. Thanks for joining up. Hey, Broski. Uh, Kev, you're the man. Appreciate it. So, Dark Commune uh, with Undivided, I'm assuming. Yeah, undivided. Uh, Dark commune undivided. Dude, if he hasn't... <laughs> it's good. Uh, all right, so if he has three cursed cultists in this list, I am banning this guy. Uh, wait, cursed cultists. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, he's got the same, same mindset as me. Yes, I think this is amazing. This would literally win any single 1,000-point game uh, ever. 
And this is a thousand points, right? Oh, uh, no, no, he's at 2K. So he posted a 2K uh, list. I thought, oh, I thought it was a thousand point list. Or is it a 2,000 point list? I'm, I'm not Taylor, sure. Uh, Taylor had the 1,000 point list. Oh, okay. So this one's, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. This All is right. Dread Clown's first Rogue Trader tournament coming up in 10 days uh, on the 10th, and he's doing CSM Alpha Legion. Okay. So then, yeah. Uh, so he's basically trying to do the triple Curse Cultist uh, list, which for me is 12 and 0 right now. Um, I am doing, I'm loving it. <laughs> That's why I'm painting it fucking right now. Uh, so the Heretic of Sorry's Demon Prince, that's that's the difference right here. So we got Demon Prince with wings, which is amazing, honestly. Like when it charges in, Matt, whatever the amount of wounds it has left, yeah. which is 10, uh, it rolls 10 dice, and on a four plus, you take a mortal wound, max six. That's strong. So it's that's basically- like assault, That's like the Assault Marine ability that I would that I trade it into for that purpose. It's 10 dice instead of six for like a grenade. It's free every time he charges. And uh, it's just fucking six mortal wounds, like al almost all the time. Uh, he's got the Slanesh for feeling no pain. Uh, and anytime he hits somebody, it's, I think, a battle shock, which is cool. Uh, cultist should be Nurgle, which it is. Uh, curse Cultist, a Curse Cultist, and a Curse Cult. So I would take away the Zinch unless he has the cp regen which he probably does i have zinch yeah so i have zinch gives you a cp if you pass a leadership test so you don't get to re-roll this you have to pass it on i believe a six so basically you uh you do the i have zinch which is like a a, a dark pack test so you dark pack you can re-roll the dark pack because of the icon but then the keyword of i have zinch is you have to do a leadership test as well so you have a chance to actually fail the i have zinch on a six plus, which honestly, if you play Grey Knights in ninth edition, you fail fucking fifty percent of the time rolling a six plus. Uh, so the I Zinch is the only iffy so far. The extra CP is cool, but if you ever give up a um, uh, secondary, you're going to get a CP anyway, which you can't double it up anyway. So that's the first thing we can talk about. Uh, Obliterators four points for Zinch, which is cool. So you automatically wound on a five plus, and for one CP you can bring a guy back at full wounds. So that helps you with the with the regen. Uh, Bikers Nurgle should be Nurgle. Yep. So we have plasma pistol and then two plasma guns. Them coming in from reserves or from the side with five plasma shots with Nurgle and uh, exploding fives is just stupid. Uh, so that's really good. They're like my favorite secondary unit. Forge Fiend with Undivided, uh, Ectoplasma, Ectoplasma. I think the Undivided um, Auto Cannons are actually better. And then the Nurgle. So I have one of these Nurgle and one of these Undivided Auto Cannons. And the reason I say Auto Cannons is because you get 12 shots over um, D3 plus 3 Blast. So the 12 shots, Devastating Wounds, um, is better into vehicles because you're basically just fishing for sixes. So your full rerolls exploding on sixes, and then you're wounding on basically sixes uh, for the devastating wounds. So there's two damage. Let's say you get five devastating wounds. That's just fucking ten damage right there uh, with the auto cannons. So I would definitely do one auto cannon forge fiend. Try it out. Test it out. You still have one ectoplasma cannon in the mouth. So you're still shooting the plasma cannon as well with full rerolls. Uh, and then the other Forge Fiend with Nurgle, I've been running that for a while now, is two Nurgles. Uh, it's good for defensive purposes. You start it on the table, uh, and it explodes in fives. So I've went from five shots to fucking ten shots <laughs> with uh, the exploding blast D3 shots. Sile, really good. I'm not... I would go one or the other. I would go... Uh, Blue Scribes or Sile, I'd probably just go Sile over Blue Scribes. And then how many points are we at? Are we at 1995? Please tell me. Is this exactly 2K or is it 1995? Also, is there is there an Abaddon in that? No, no Abaddon. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm less scared without Abaddon as a guy yeah, playing into the list. 100%. This list is going to die very, very quickly. Uh... But he's going for fluff. He's going for uh, for Alpha Legion, which I don't think Alpha Legion would carry a Curse Cultist. <laughs> Alpha Legion would be a lot of like hit, move, hit, move, get behind enemy lines, and like 
throw grenades everywhere. So, yes, uh, from what you have here, yeah, yeah, what you have here, the only thing I would change is the blue scribes into like two, uh, if you have the points, two uh, Nurgle units. Um, and then if you wanted to play it the way it is, I would take away the Zinch Accursed Cultist for a Nurgle Accursed Cultist, just so that way one Nurgle Accursed Cultist could start on the table and be defended by not being shot outside 12 inches. And then the other two undivided, one comes in from strategic reserves just to take over an entire flank. And the other one is like behind a building just waiting to charge out uh, somewhere. So you have two on the table, one in uh, reserves, and then you strategic reserve that one uh, one forge fiend with undivided auto cannons, and then the other forge fiend with uh, uh, Nurgle as well. And then the only thing, like Matt said, is I don't run obliterators. I don't think you need them with the triple curse cultists. You're basically just saying, "Hey, I dare you to try and kill my fucking hundred models on the table." And to do that, you need Abaddon. So that would be the only difference: is Abaddon instead of the obliterators. So, um, hey, guys, I, I appreciate uh, you all signing in here, but I got a bitch for the night. So, um, Matt, I appreciate you. Me. Thanks for thanks for helping out so much. And guys, uh, he is going to be coaching uh, as well in the Dirtbag Nation, and he's going to be doing a lot more videos. So, if you guys want uh, some coaching from Matt, who was one of the top players in the entire world and probably still is uh, mentally, uh, he, he's going to be taking coaching up on uh, Patreon.com. And if you guys want to hit him up uh, on Discord, you can definitely hit him up on Discord. But he's he's going to be helping out the channel so much going, moving forward. So, appreciate you, Matt. Yeah, man. Thanks, guys. Have a good night, dude. <clears throat> All right. So, that would be my suggestion, bro, is don't run triple curse cultists unless you run the abaddon um just because the four up invuln save is why you're bringing abaddon specifically without the four up invuln save the five up invuln just doesn't cut it uh they're going to die very very fast so that would that would be my, my insight and you can make a really cool custom abaddon honestly like a really cool alpha legion abaddon model um there's a lot of 3d prints on like helmets, shoulder pads, emblems that you can get from Etsy. So that way they can kind of like just glue them and, and paint them up all over uh, all over Abaddon. I want to do one for Night Lords. Like I want to make my Abaddon a Night Lord theme, but Mike fucking painted them Black Legion. <laughs> so I have to uh, either repaint them or uh, get Mike to paint them in, uh, in Night Lords theme. So, but yeah, let's get some, uh, some fucking music for my over... But need some non non what you call it. I don't want to get flagged. No copyright. That's what we need. No copyright music. Are y'all doing any? painting tonight here we go Dude, I literally have all of these accursed cultists to paint before LVO. I have a wedding in two weeks. Um, and then I have the honeymoon right afterwards. So basically I have nothing. I can't do anything for the next like month. And then when I get back, it'll be the middle of November. And then I have December. Uh... Then I have December to basically paint the rest of these guys to get them at least tournament ready for uh, for LVO. Then I really have to figure out how to fucking transport into LVO. And 
Nice. Dude, guard is another, like guard I feel, I feel you bro, like painting all those models with just like the same paint scheme every single time. I totally see where you come from. But I fucked up is I, I got an airbrush and I did all of them one color instead of painting them three different colors at once. So that was, that was my bad. Ten more termies and trying to get some effects on already finished swords. Nice, dude. What color does your sword you do? I I love my my bright green swords on my great knights. It just stands out so much from afar. And then you look at them close and you're like, wow, they suck. But not nah, from afar. They look they look badass. And I got fucking dark gray knights. <laughs> like I didn't do the standard uh, color scheme. So everybody always says like, dude, your gray knights look so cool. And I'm like, cool, look at them close. <laughs> like, shit. Yeah, dude, honestly, I'm painting all of these guys uh, the skin color. And then, like, basically, you just want one color. So you're just, like, going through all, all, all one color. And then all of a sudden, you just wash all of the skin to, like, that, that brown stuff. Uh, and then once it's washed, it looks so good. And then you paint another color and then you paint another color. So basically you're just painting one color at a time and it makes things so much less stressful. So for me, it's just all this color shit and then wash right afterwards. And you feel proud, honestly, like you, once you paint all of your shit, you're like, you know what? doesn't look too bad it looks great from like you know tabletop and then you feel all proud with it you're like dude i'm actually playing a full game fully painted army that you painted yourself and you didn't commission paint like i usually do and then you show your fiance and she's like cool <laughs> So I would wait and drag the shitty dry brush with black layered different blues over it from Pulse Look. So black and blues, like the standard um, force weapons. Nice. All right, that cultist is done. All right, so we got the green squad. I think one more green guy. Nice. One more green guy. Tau seemed pretty fun to paint. If I were to paint Tau, it'd be the uh, Tron theme. But how do you get inside all of those lines? I saw the, the Tron towel and it always made me want to paint them like that. It's a lot harder than it actually looks. All right, so this guy. Oh shit. Gunslinger Studio from Japan, let's go. What time is it over there? It is literally bedtime over here. I want to go to Japan as well. That is one of my top <clears throat> countries I like to visit in the world. Eleven forty-five. Yeah, so literally. 12, 13 hours ahead of time. Dude, the uh, far side looks amazing. With the little tree on his base. Oh, dude, it's awesome. 
Like there's some, I mean, most of the models that are the, probably the coolest models are from Warhammer uh, instead of 40K. I think Warhammer models are some of the coolest models that Games Workshop makes. But if I were to do like a custom model, it would definitely be from Warhammer or Farsight Enclave. <laughs> that model is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we got our last green Accursed Cultist done. Fuck, now we have all of the red guys. What's up, babe? Death Guard, what would, uh... Do you want to talk about Death Guard? What do you want from Death Guard? Because I love Death Guard. But Death Guard painting is really cool too. I said Death Guard is my favorite army to play right now. Chaos Demon's question Can you run competitive list without Bellacor? 100%. Bellic like, you don't have to run. Bellacor with um I mean Bellacor is really good. It's it's almost like asking like can you run a chaos list without Abaddon? And the answer is yes. Do you want to? No. <laughs> so I feel like that's that's the same answer with Bellacor. Is like Bellacor is really good and gets you up the table really fast. And even if you just run a bunch of small demons with, you know, a couple big demons, Bellacor is just gonna make them perform so much better. And Bellacor is an awesome model. So I feel like it's it's almost the same response as Abaddon. Like, can you run without Abaddon? Yes. Do you want to? That's your call. And I think I think demons are just fucking awesome. Just as an army as a whole, as as a as like the lower wide, like you're literally just the badass of badassery in 40k. How the hell am I supposed to get a Land Raider in this? <laughs> there are a lot of 3D prints on Etsy, bro. If you want to go on there and have them have somebody print you out a Land Raider. Uh, go to eBay, go to local stores. I actually just posted on um, Discord that I found a old school Land Raider, which I probably should have bought uh, on the shelf at a local store. So I honestly should have just bought it and put it on my shelf. But there's got to be places to uh, find like a used land raider and obviously just strip the paint, strip the plastic, whatever you got to do. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, shit. Got paint all over my pants. So I think the, what, what do you think armies are the best armies to run a land raider? I think Chaos Space Marine honestly should be the number one army to run a land raider. You have two things that make it super good. You have the Nurgle strat, which means you can't be shot at 12 inches. You have Abaddon with the Nurgle strat, making him reroll everything and exploding on fives with his fucking last cannons. Uh, and then you have the units that go inside the land raider. So honestly, I think Chaos have the best fucking land raider you can take in the market. Everything else, uh, Custodes hitting on twos would be another good land raider. Uh, what else? Mm -hmm. Death Guard. Potentially another good land raider. Mm -hmm. And then any other land raider really needs a like tech priest to make it hit on uh hit on twos. I tried the land raider hitting on threes with Grey Knights and it did not it did not perform well at all. I missed fucking so many shots. Oh, shit. <clears throat> you don't need to deliver your paladins. You need them to jump around the table and never beat and never die. That's basically what you need your paladins to do. I would only do a five man Terminator squad with a chaplain uh, in a 
Land Raider. You could probably do Paladins too, but like Land Raider wants to sit back and shoot with the Tech Priest. So it hits on twos and it can be healed and don't use that as, as a delivery system. Use it as like a interceptor, move, shoot, move system. But you're playing like it's ninth edition or even sixth edition. I would use the Land Raider and Grey Knights as a, as a gun platform, just not dying with a, uh, a Tech Priest. I wouldn't use that as a delivery system because we have Teleport Assault. We can literally be anywhere, wherever we want. Oh, no problem, bro. So basically you're thinking like 7th edition instead of thinking like 10th edition. Land Raiders are gun platforms, unless you play a different army. And Grey Knights do not need delivery systems because of Teleport Assault. Just rapid ingress them, basically. Rapid ingress, and then you're nine inches away from your opponent behind a wall. They can't get to you, and then next turn you move up five inches, then charge four inches, and then you're good. And you say, I win. What's the game called? I win. It's bullshit. How do you take this? You don't. Basically, again... Grey Knights don't play like they used to. They don't play super tanky. They don't sit on objectives. They literally just hop around all over the place, denying primary from your opponent and focusing on secondary points. So I don't think I've controlled the center besides either stealing, in a, stealing the center or coming down within three inches of somebody in the center or the strikes taking it turn one with their scout move. That's honestly like the only time I've ever controlled the center. But we're not going to be the army to just fucking survive. We basically have sigil for a reason, which is if you target us, we, we run away. <laughs> that's literally one of our best enhancements. So that's going to be the way that you have to play Grey Knights in 10th edition. It's not going to be like, all right, I'm going to survive all of these fucking shots because you're not. Ah, shit, all right, three down. Four down. Five down. I almost drank my paint water. <laughs> oh, bro, got uh, retracted. I guess you can't post pictures in here. <clears throat> Good to know, hard to coming from 21 years playing <laughs> I'm used to having 60 bodies on the center. Yeah, it's completely different. Wondering how you run a leadership rebuff list for fun. I, I don't, debuff? Like for Green Knights? I'm sorry, for Death Guard? I actually have a, a video against Jack. It's, uh, I think it's posted up on, yeah, I think I just posted it the other day on YouTube. It's Death Guard versus Space Marines and it's the minus two to hit uh video so basically all my guys are essentially minus two to hit uh and it was super fun that's probably gonna be my main list that i run for death guard <laughs> yeah dude i literally almost grabbed the water and i was like oh that's not my beer <sighs> i'm getting like sloppier and sloppier painting this skin color but yeah, like I said we got a, a wedding in basically two weeks so we're just trying to prepare and get everything done ahead of time I'm off tomorrow so I'm gonna do as much as I possibly can for the wedding and then make some videos for you guys uh, and then if I have time, I'll probably do some more painting. But yeah, the wedding is definitely taking up a lot of our time. But right after that, we go on honeymoon, which is gonna be fucking amazing.
What more questions you got for me, gents? So we have, how much do we have left? We have all the like little stuff for the tables that we have to paint, which most of it's like done. It's kind of just like uh, staining a bunch of wood stuff. Um, we have to stain big uh, boxes. We have to make sure the flowers look good on our head table. Mm -hmm. um, we have a meeting with our, our DJ on Monday before the wedding. Just to make sure all the songs are correct. Uh, we have to finish our dance for the wedding. <laughs> our first dance. We're doing like a choreography thing. Uh, honestly, there's not a lot. I'm thinking Death Guard because of the combos. Like basically you make it more tankier with the minus one to hit. Um, it's basically you keep it behind cover until they're in contagion range, which you can bring in a banner from reserve. So that way anybody that shoots is minus one ballistic skill. And then if you put stealth on your lane raider, it's now minus two to hit. So imagine a lane raider being minus two to hit from any direction. Like they're basically gonna hit on fives or even sixes. So that's what I mean by by Death Guard has a little bit better of a defensive capability than obviously Grey Knights. Grey Knights have the armor contempt, so you have a, uh, cover and then armor contempt. But if they just can't even hit you, <laughs> that might be equally as powerful. But Death Guard would be the one that I use as a delivery system because you want them to be close, you want them to be in contagion range. And your guys are so fucking slow anyway that you want that extra 10 inch move with your line raider to get into combat. So what are you planning on taking after LVO? So LVO after it, it's just gonna be mainly fun list. Um, I don't know what, what I'm gonna focus on in 2024. It might be, see, I want to start a new army, but honestly, it's like, I have so many armies and I honestly, I don't have so many, I have like four armies. I just want to play the game, honestly. I just want to play different armies at any time. Worst great net matchup is T-Suns, 100%. <clears throat> uh, I think I'm gonna play a lot of Death Guard. I'm gonna play some sisters. I want to put them on the table. Uh, and then Grey Knights just for shits and giggles. So Grey Knights are going to be like fun list. Like I'm running six Dread Knights on Monday. <laughs> so that's that's going to be super fun. Uh, and then Death Guard, I'm just going to run a shit ton of Death Guard units. I actually have been running eight uh, Demon Princes in my Chaos Space Marine army. And that list is hilarious. So I might actually take that to an RTT. I get playing the gaps with Grey Knights, but do you just kill and steal objectives or are you trying to kill enemy threats? No, dude, honestly, if you've seen any of my latest Grey Knight videos, I have to do actually some, some more like live videos just so you can kind of see the play style as it happens. But with Grey Knights, you literally are just kind of like, have you ever seen the movie it flashes in it it's um justice league and the one part where he literally goes i push them and then run really fast away <laughs> that is basically how great knights play so they kill the chaff they kill their secondary units and when all of their secondary units are, are dead 
it's basically you just jumping around the table scoring secondaries while they can't score secondaries because they're trying to kill you. So they don't have the mindset like we do where all of our units are secondary units. So they're only used to their secondary units doing actions. So they don't want to have their 700 point fucking unit do an action one turn to get two, three points. When for us, we do that every fucking turn. Like our 700 point unit might hop in the corner and do investigate signals for two points. So we're used to that, but they're not. So for us, every single unit we have in our army is a secondary unit. Them, if we kill all their secondary units, they're kind of in a pickle because now they have nothing to do. Yes, eat fucking demon princes. It is hilariously fun to play. It's not good at all. It's just super fun. And I've played uh, one of our cuddle buddies on the team and I played in two games in a row, honestly, with it. And I actually won both games, but it basically is, I lost four Demon Princes in a turn. <laughs> uh, but then the ones that didn't die clapped back and killed all of their threats. So the only thing that was on the table were shit that he didn't want to get into combat with the Demon Prince. So I was able to just kind of run around, do uh, threaten basically the table and all my smaller units just did secondaries. So it was a super fun, super fun list. I actually have that battle report. Shit, I actually did that battle report. I have to do a video on that. So that's actually coming up on the channel. That'll probably be on Patreon uh, in a week or so. I have to post uh, how to make the, the tournament list first. That's gonna be coming up probably tomorrow on Patreon and then the, I have four or five battle reports that I have to record, which will probably be tomorrow. That'll be on Patreon first, and then obviously go to YouTube afterwards. But... Did I literally just paint fucking 30 dudes? Alright, all of the skin color is done. Donezo. So I have to figure out what else to paint on these yellow guys, because these yellow guys are super ugly looking. There's like... They're super... I just don't know why I did yellow. Like, why the fuck did I do yellow? Because the skin is like matching with the yellow, so I can't really tell the difference. So I might have to go just bright ass yellow. Do I have a yellow yellow? Yellow yellow. So I might just go fucking straight up yellow yellow uh, on these guys to really brighten up their muscles, I guess. Maybe I could dry brush. Hmm. Can I dry brush these guys? Let's clean, clean up my paintbrush. I need a drug rush, drug rush, drug rush. Drug rush. What if you hit with the brown? I Dude, I did that. So I did the brown wash throughout the entire fucking thing. But still the, the, the skin color and the yellow are just too too sim too close even with the bra uh the brown wash so i don't know if i need more of the skin color to go on like this is me just loading the fucking skin color on it and you can't even tell the difference like that is I mean, again, you can't really tell because the camera, but like the skin color and the yellow is literally, it's, it looks exactly the same. And it's the elf skin, so it's like, it's the normal skin color. 
Don't see if fucking yellow does anything. <laughs> We're going ham, guys. We're doing it. Yeah. Oh my god. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are the chances of that? We'll stay like that. Babe, what color should I do this? What am I looking at? You see the skin color? Right? See the yellow on the whole body? Uh -huh. Most of the body is yellow. What yeah. should I paint that yellow? Because the skin color looks exactly like the yellow. Can you leave that yellow and paint the other stuff something else? The skin? Yeah. What color of skin should I do? Blue. Blue skin? Oh. Like. Like a like a Avatar. like a gray, like a death blue or whatever. Like Avatar. Like Avatar blue. Yeah. Yeah, I can try that. Make them red. I already have red, so I got red, green, and yellow. But yellow looks too like. I think blue will make them stand up then. I think I just need the the skin like the, instead of the the tan skin, I need like a blue. You said blue. Mm -hmm. right, I'll try a blue skin. I was thinking just straight up painting the yellow yellow, but that's too dumb. That's hard. Yeah, so it says high of 66. Hey, we don't have any other info. <laughs> Low of 44. Last year it was 259. Average is 62. That's all good news, babe. Um, I'm going to go to bed. All right, babe. We have the best time ever. <sighs> uh, yeah, so she probably had a good idea. It's basically paint them like a, a, a death, you know, like a death gray, like the skin already rotted. Or something um or like a blue like an avatar blue something like that that would probably be pretty cool mm -hmm. now i'm painting your silver pants blue <laughs> what movie honestly it's easy Uh, soon, babe. <laughs> Just waiting for everybody to donate to our wedding fund. is opposite yellow on the color wheel so that will make oh fuck yeah blue and yellow let's go so yeah that was hey babe they said that was a good call with the blue it's because it's opposite on the color wheel yeah that's exactly why you said it <laughs> obviously
Violet, blue, same thing. Yeah, I'll try and do that tomorrow. But yeah, dude, the skin and the yellow are just fucking terrible idea by me. But these Accursed Cultist units look so fucking cool. Like their design and stuff. This is the uh, the red and skin color guy. So basically it's uh, like the red guy popping out of the fucking regular cultist. Just looks sick. Sick. All right, one down. Drew, appreciate you. Thanks, bro. Pre really appreciate it. Babe, Drew tipped us $10. Said good luck with the wedding preparations. You can tell him, how about that? <laughs> like, I need a purse. Um, Drew, yeah. appreciate you. She said we're going to Italy, we need more. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, you're awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Drew's going to bed, so that's why I wanted to tip us before he goes to bed. Yeah, I want to go to bed too, so can we uh, wrap the shindig up? Yes, I, but, but like, I got in the mood to like paint, and I can't not stop painting. Okay, well, I'm going to Please. Yes, I'm going to call it in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes sounds good. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. I got a choice. Well, you do. You're my fiance. Alright, goodbye. About to be my wife. Babe, you didn't help me paint tonight. I would be done right now I if you- I did everything for our wedding tonight. If you helped me paint it. Do you know what I did all night? You did amazing stuff. You did- okay. you did life-changing stuff. Life -changing. I know. I'm literally at this point just invited to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> it's it's like uh what should we call it? I have off from work tomorrow. But we are, like the bedroom is literally right next to us. So it's like, if I talk, she will literally hear. And I get hyped when people tip, so. <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. It's all for a wedding, so we're good. We are good. Yeah, I think the, the eight demon prints, um, video is going to be hilarious uh i only i did two games of it but i only took pictures of one game i wish i took pictures of both games because <clears throat> they were both fucking super close and super fun I think uh, you can use, you can honestly use like whatever you want for the cultists. Like I used uh, zombies and they worked out fine because they're like the smaller base sizes. So the zombies in Warhammer uh, for Nurgle or Death Guard, you can use those. Um, you can use Slanesh uh, Demonettes, they're pretty cool. But really, any 28 mil or whatever size base they are, you can use those type models. And then for the big guys, you can use those 3D print possessed on uh, Etsy. 
I saw those being used, those are really cool. Because I use those for my actual possessed models, but if you use them for Chris Cultus, they're about the same, they're a little bit bigger than your Chris Cultus, honestly. But you can say, hey, they're bigger, so it's more benefit to you shooting at me. So you can use uh, those, but yeah, it's it's like you're not searching for Chris Cultus, you're really just searching for um, proxies, essentially, to look like a Chris Cultus. That would be my suggestion. Two down. How big are the bait? I think they're 40 mil bases for the big guys. And then for the little guys, they are smaller than 32. So I think they're the 28 mm millimeter. So like the, the Slanesh ones, the Demonettes, I think they're the small millimeters, the 28 mil or whatever. But the Nurgles, the zombies from Warhammer, they could be cool. Uh, pox walkers, you know, so you can use them for Death Guard and Chaos Space Marines because they're technically all the same, right? Anybody know if the Phillies won tonight? They probably did because there's fireworks going off where I'm at. Or they could have lost and people are riding. Let's fucking go, babe. Phil's one. Dude, if they, if they literally just run one, I literally heard like fireworks go off uh, down the street. That's fucking awesome, let's go. Fuck the Braves. Awesome. My phone honestly has been blowing up for the past two minutes. So it's probably all the, all of my buddies just going crazy. And here I am painting this fucking red guy tan. This relates to you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. When did you start your Chaos Army? I started Chaos back when I started, uh, honestly, Grey Knights. I wanted a complete opposite army of Grey Knights, which obviously was Chaos. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, just random Chaos models. Never actually played them competitively until 9th edition. But uh, I started them back in 9th when fucking the Terminator brick. Let's fucking go! Red October, baby, look at that. Let's go, fillers! Ryan, you're the man. Dude, I can't fucking wait. Like, them going to NLS, like, and then fucking, oh, dude. It's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. Like, wouldn't that be a fucking wedding gift right there? Ah, oh, dude. 
Dude, that's awesome. You just made my note right there. Uh, I played Chaos, like, I really fell in love with them when uh, Abaddon and 10 Terminators that just didn't die. Like, you just buffed up the Terminators beyond belief, and they just never fucking died. I actually took them to ACO, Linux City Open, and I top aided with Chaos when they weren't, like, the best faction. That was a ninth edition. And <laughs> people, like, like, either haven't played them, haven't played my list, or haven't played them the way I ran them. <laughs> and it was just hilarious. Like, what can they do? How fast are they? They can teleport? Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And then fucking them right in their face, uh, turn one, with my fully buffed up squad of Terminators. So that was when I really dove into them. Um, and I bought like the Venom Crawlers and shit like that. And then 10 came out and I bought everything in this new list. I bought uh, six boxes of Accursed Cultists, three boxes of uh, Dark Communes, three fucking Forge Fiends. Uh, what else did I buy? I bought Obliterators. I bought... Uh, what the fuck did I buy? Everything. I bought... Um, seekers. Bikes. Flamers. Really everything that Chaos runs now, I fucking bought for 10th edition. Yeah, let's go fillers. Red October, baby. Dude, Bryce Harper last night, or the last game, like staring down the shortstop twice, not just once, but twice. Mm -hmm. Made made all of Philadelphia just die laughing and love Harper. It's not, it's not the Liberty Bell that defines Philly. It's fucking Bryce Harper. <laughs> I saw that in a meme today. I was like, Bryce Harper has more love from Philly than the fucking Liberty Bell. And ever since he like started, he was always on top of Philadelphia. Like he was always the one that hustled his ass off. He'd fucking go for doubles when he should have singles. He was just a fucking ball player. And for a whole city, especially Philadelphia, to love a ball player like that, dude, that is that is a fucking blessing. Oh dude, we are the worst but best sports fans in the world. I mean, I don't know about football across the seas but fucking like when it comes to american sports like dude you don't you don't mess with philly like you don't wear different sports jerseys to philadelphia stadiums they will fucking hound you what's up astro fan appreciate you they will fucking throw shit at you and i don't unless like you're a female with like a cool jersey or whatever and with you whatever but like they will literally <laughs> talk shit on you the entire fucking game. They don't care if you have a kid. It's like, they're the worst but best sports fans in all of like every sport. Bought my Grey Knight just before the end of ninth edition and playing my list against friends who are experienced Eldari and T-Suns players. Oh, that sucks, man. Uh, really hard opponents to go against. They throw batteries at him a couple years. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I mean, he was one of the highest played fucking Phillies players ever in the history of Philadelphia. And he's still worth that much fucking money now. Oh, let's fucking go. What's up, buddy? Yeah, dude, I mean, and it sucks because like going with Blood Angels, I have a really good Blood Angel player in my meta. So playing you at Nova, I kind of knew <laughs> what to do and like just be like, all right, if you can make a nine inch charge, you made a nine inch charge. 
<clears throat> uh, but you fucking throw what six, six fucking units at me in one turn, and then make the first two charges on an eleven and a twelve. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just die. Oh god, that game was that game was hilarious. I guess me killing the um, twelve inch bubble guys was really the what did it. Like it allowed me to like get across the table and actually do shit. <laughs> nice. My only left but your videos have been really helpful. Oh, dude, appreciate you, bro. Dude, the videos are just to make people get better at 40k. Like, just go out there and focus on secondaries. Don't try and kill your fucking opponent. Just, just do the mission and secondaries, and you actually will win more games than just trying to tell your opponent. Three plague marines with three by th th uh, AC squads have been very good. Thirty plague marines. It's all about death guard. There you go. Later, I appreciate you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tipping. You're awesome. Um. Death guard. AC squads, AC squads, or curse cultist squads. So you're running 30 plague marines in chaos space marines. Is that is that what you're running? Because I have yet to see that. I did. I I wouldn't even think that's a thing <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, he's a really good player. Um, he's very analytical. Not anal he's like, what's the word? Um, he just solely focuses on the game. I guess I guess that's that's the that's the definition. Um, and I guess he saw what Grey Knights could do because <laughs> when we played, he was like, "Oh fuck, I didn't even think about that." So he learned uh, about the Grey Knight. Um, Mist and then uh, rapid ingress in the same turn. That was fucking funny because that saved my home home field objective from defend stronghold uh, But yeah, he, he, he was a good player to play like really good <clears throat> uh, And if you fuck up against him, he will literally counter and destroy you so but Yeah, fuck 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 custodies. He, he, he murdered me with sisters Chaos can take up to 750 points of Plague Marines in 2k list, Plague, Rubric, or Corn. Didn't even think about that. I'll be right back.
Okay, so. His 4 plus invuln is for Chaos Astartes, correct? War Master. Wild Friendly Heretic Astartes Infantry or Heretic Astartes Mounted Unit. Okay, so let's go to what is it? Other data sheet, and then I could bring Plague Marines. Tell me, I could bring? No, I can't bring Plague Marines. So it's it's under Allied units. Plague Marine. Plague Marines. And they are, yeah, it just says faction keyword, Death Guard. So they wouldn't get Heretic Astartes. You fucking cheater. God damn it. Why you gotta cheat and make my fucking, oh, damn it. Yeah, bro, it's Heretic Astartes only, so it's only the Chaos uh, Codex. It was good, good, good idea, though. But honestly, if you just run three Curse Cultists with the four plus invuln save, it's just as fun. <laughs> like, dude, they, they don't die. Um, I'm running them to LVO, so if any of you gents are going to LVO, please come up and say hi to me. I honestly... I'm so confident with this list that I think I will be one loss, maybe? Or maybe top fucking 16, who the hell knows? The Lost and the Damned is, oh, I guess is that um, the one little thing where it says like the Berserkers and, and all that shit. God damn it, now you're making me look up keywords, keywords and shit. Is it in the uh, Chaos Space Marine like faction shit? videos that you bring flamers with your purifiers would it be better to bring side cannons? uh no i mean they're anti-infantry two plus with their uh purify flame so the flamers just make it better so everything is basically minus one ignore cover so just the additional minus one to ignore cover you're going to kill the same shit they're going to kill with the anti-infantry two plus so that's why flamers are better than side cannons it's the army rules thanks tom <laughs> appreciate it what's up tom tom i need uh, more reps Let's go. Uh, Chaos, Space Marine, Index, Army Rules, Lost in the Dam. All right. So if your army is faction Heretic Astartes, you can include any army units in your army that when you do faction keywords, replace Heretic Astartes. Awesome. So keywords are replaced with Heretic Astartes. Plague Marines, see Death Guard. That's awesome. So Rubric Marines, Core Berserkers, and Plague Marines can get... Uh, Heretic Astartes, but Strike Force up to 500 points. So you can definitely, can you run 30 of them? What is it, 160 times three? Yeah, I guess you can. Because they are how many points? They're 80 points. So yeah, you could definitely run 30 fucking Marines. Oh, dude, did you just make me fucking want to test out a new list? I think you did. Because I am running uh, 30 Plague Marines with my Death Guard right now. So it's like 30 Plague Marines, Morty, um, three uh, Rhinos with three of the Fight First guys and three of the Biolish Putrefires. So it's just... 
fucking all the plague marines running up the table in rhinos next to mortarian uh and then they have to decide am i going to kill mortarian or am i going to try and kill the plague marines Toughness five, five, yeah, dude, the, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's super fun. Like when they actually get in combat, it's, it's just nuts. Uh, but if you run a curse cultist, it's six D six plus 12 attacks. Four year olds to hit, four year olds to wound, minus one AP, two damage. Opsec two. <laughs> yeah, so now you're gonna make me fucking rethink my list. All right, I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if I got my list is like so focused on secondaries though. And I don't know. I mean, I could honestly take out what's his name, the Demon Prince, the Ace, the Alexis or whatever his name is, because he's 120 points. Have you seen my updated uh, list, Broski, for um, for LVO? Does everybody take cleanse and homers? Why are they minus one to hit? Just because of the um, Nurglings? Yeah, Blue Scribes I took out and I threw in a Salaxi or whatever. You don't have access to their stratagems though, so how do you cloud of flies then? Or do you wait? Since they're Heretic Astartes, do they get access to the Chaos Space Marine stratagems? Uh, dude, on my side, it's all purple. <laughs> so like they all just, every, everybody who, who's commenting right now is purple. Uh... Oh yeah, so Death Guard obviously alone. So um, we're talking about uh, Death Guard in, um... yeah, dude, send, send, send that to me uh, on, on Discord. Uh, just DM me or something, but we're talking about the uh, Death Guard in Chaos Space Marines. So they gain the Heretic Astartes keyword. So do they get Heretic Astartes stratagems? Because I guess technically they're not Nurgle, or are they? That they probably can't get the strategy because they're allied units. I don't fucking know. Tenth edition rules are weird. But still, the four fucking invuln from uh, Abaddon is hilarious. On 30 fucking Plague Marines. Yeah, no, no problem, Tom. No problem, Tom. Just paying some fucking accursed cultists here. Trying to get ready for LVO.
And I think this is the last red guy, and then I'm basically done the color elf. Elf skin. Tom is a, a GT up in Scranton. I'm not sure if you saw that, but you should definitely come up. It's uh, like December 16th and 17th or something. It's like that Saturday. But it's not, not too far. I think all the cuddle buddies and everybody's coming up, so you should definitely take the trip. It's on Facebook if you search. Let me pull the date. It's like fight before Christmas or something. December 16th and 17th. The fight before Christmas 2023. Shit, have we done the last fucking red dude? Yeah, buddy. All right, cool. Last red guy is now done. So, all the skin is done on everybody. No leftovers. Booyah. All right, so we have completed curse. Curse cultist skin colors are now done. So we have to figure out what color we want to do next, which will probably be silver on all the chrome shit, and then what else? Yeah, it's all the fucking details now. I really should do the cloth. Cloth, I think I want to do red. I'm gonna do for all all the other guys. It's like a red cloth on everybody. The red on red, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean, they're gonna be red anyway, but... Hmm. Yeah, so we'll get that going. <sighs> all right, gents, I think I'm gonna head out here. I appreciate all y'all guys. You guys just, uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in Discord. But uh, a lot to come up on the channel i got a wedding coming up so we're just trying to make videos so that way i can post them before you know during the wedding and then after the wedding when we're on our honeymoon uh patreons it's just all the content first on patreon.com and then uh youtube they'll come out like a week or two later but uh comment share do all that stuff we got matt that just got that just joined mike is actually over uh, overseas painting like a shit ton he's gonna be our painting guy um for the channel do is like own little th like everything on the painting channel uh and then we got matt joining with space marines towel and uh and guard to do the, those types of videos and then we have obviously still all of our videos but there's just gonna be so much stuff coming up uh let me know what you guys want to see there's all there's a content tab on discord so you guys can post like what kind of stuff you want to see coming up and if you guys are competitive you can or grandmasters you guys can mess with me anytime one-on-one -on -one, we go over lists tactics ideas anything you guys need uh hit me up on discord but the suggestions always up for suggestions for anybody but 
yeah, dude, appreciate you guys. Thanks for thanks for joining the stream. It's always fun. Uh, got a shit ton done, a shit ton of painting done, so that's great. And uh, next video will be Grey Knight Six Dread Knight list against Space Marines on Monday. That's gonna be the next time I play, and that'll be the last time I play until November fourteenth, which then we'll probably start scratching and fiending for 40k so <laughs> appreciate you guys thanks and uh yeah we'll see another video soon